Are you struggling for consistency in your sim racing? Does your I rating look like a roller coaster? If so, we have good news for you. The way to get more consistent is to first understand what you're doing differently than the professionals. And VRS is the answer. With our competitive subscription, you will have the telemetry, setups, tutorials, and everything else you need to fully analyze your driving. Our data packs and the ability to compare your driving with the best in the world will show you exactly where to adjust your inputs, change your driving line, and shave seconds off of your lap times. And our powerful and precise Direct Force Pro Wheelbase and Precision Pedals are being used by some of the world's best drivers. All these champions agree that VRS hardware is not just the best on the market, it's also priced well below the competition. So if you're looking to upgrade to direct drive and the best pedals in sim racing, VRS is your answer. If you want to get better, get faster, and make it happen sooner rather than later, you owe it to yourself to find out why so many people are switching to VRS. You'll be so glad that you did. Visit www.virtualracingschool.com and learn why the best use VRS. Rickmotech high performance sim racing equipment. There's only one place to go Rickmotech.com. And perhaps the strangest display of deja vu I've experienced on one of these Extreme Motorsports Rickmatech broadcasts. We find ourselves in Central Florida for the second week in a row. Last week, the Touring Car Cup took to the runways and taxiways largely untouched since B-17s pounded the concrete during World War II. But tonight, we'll marvel as GTP and GT3 racers respect, or try to respect, the bumps for 90 minutes. Welcome everybody to Sebring International Raceway for season number nine's penultimate round, round number six of the Extreme Motorsports Rick Motec World Challenge presented by the SCCA Foundation, Butt Kicker and Proforma Elite here on Apex Racing TV. I'm Greg Ginsberg and joining me in the announce booth as always is Larry Lefty McLeod along with Jonathan Grabowski and uh, he's going to be bringing you all the best views of tonight's 90 minute run to the checkers for our GTP and GT3 racers. So good evening Larry and welcome back. It, it's almost as if we never left but welcome back to Seabrook. I am um, yeah I'm excited to be back you know spending the week in in Florida is always fun. Um, even, but, even Central Florida. But in reality of this virtual race, it, it's everyone got a lot more familiar with this track over the last week because it was also the iRacing 12-hour of Sebring week. That's right. And a lot of our competitors will get to some of them in a little bit, put teams together. Some of our commentators may have participated in it mm. and had a good time. But what it means is these particular classes had a lot of seat time 
And uh, we'll see if that pays off. We'll see if we have good clean racing or if we have over aggressive type racing. But I'm told we're not going to get any rain tonight, which would be different than the, the the 12 hour race that was put on over the weekend. They did add some rain. I don't see any here in the Rick Patek uh, forecast, but maybe they'll slip some in here halfway through. Well, well and, and my understanding, Larry, and it was announced right after iRacing had released uh, their new weather system, uh, that there was a moratorium on Mother Nature in the Rick Motek World Challenge, <laughs> at least for this season, at least for uh, for season number nine. Maybe uh, maybe tens the number, and we'll uh, start to see a little bit uh, uh, some, something a little bit more variable here. And as as you know, and as you were one of the racers uh, that raced at the virtual 12 hours of Sebring this past weekend that, uh, you know, quite a bit of changeable conditions and not all that much unlike what you typically see at Sebring this, this time of year, very short weather bursts and uh, you know, mixed in with a lot of dry weather running. It can definitely change things up for these racers and hopefully we'll see that in season 10. All right, so uh, we do have these drivers out on track right now. They're completing their practice session, which I think wraps up in less than a minute or so. So let's do this, Larry. Why don't we turn things over as we always do uh, to Kevin Ford. He's going to give us tonight's track guide of beautiful Sebring International Raceway, 3.65 miles, actually three and three quarter miles of uh, runway and taxiway here in Central Florida. Welcome everyone to Sebring International Raceway located here in beautiful Sebring, Florida. Great weather today for your track guide around this three and three quarter mile course. It is a doozy. 17 turns to get a lap done around here. Built in 1950, the very first Formula One or U.S. Formula One race was held here in 1959. So this place has quite a bit of history. They've been holding events here, well, for over 70 years now. All right, let's head up the front straightaway. You'll notice our pit area to the right. A lot of campers will line up here to the left. As we head towards turn one under a walkway bridge here, this is a very fast entry. You wanna get right down close to the wall there, get a nice roll off the exit. This will bring you into turn two and then a heavy break zone right away down into turn three here. Right back to the left, back to the right then ultimately into turn five here. We'll get a nice roll up off this exit. Get some good speed to come up through turn six. This will lead us towards turn seven up here, the hairpin at Sebring. Another very, very tight break zone and it gets narrow down here as you come into this very tight rotating right-hander right back to the left and then right back to the right. This will lead us up into Fangio, turns eight and nine. Another fast section through here. You will see some overtaking opportunities as drivers lead up into Cunningham here. Heavy on the brakes once again. Tight right-hander. We'll come right back to the left through 12. And then this will lead us up into Tower Turn, turn 13 here at Sebring. Right down to the apex, got a good run up off the exit. This will bring us up through Bishop. Really fast section through here. Double left-hander. This will lead us into the little chicane here. To the right, back to the left, into Le Mans. And then ultimately out onto the back stretch. And this will bring us into the heaviest overtaking zone. <laughs> Obviously, down this very long back straightaway here. As this brings us into Sunset Bend, the famous Sunset Bend. Very fast, but very treacherous and bumpy corner here as we come through Sunset and get right back to the bottom. Wide open up off this exit here. And this leads us right back to the start finish line at the amazing Sebring International Raceway. There you go, there's your track guide. Thank you for being with us. And thank you so much to Kevin Ford for tonight's track guide to Sebring International Raceway. And, and you know, Larry, we, before we uh, went to Kevin, we were talking about 
uh, weather at Sebring and the uh, the iRacing weather system. And so we may not r have rain, you know, but, but we there's have a hurricane. Yeah, we have a hurricane. I was going to say, you know, lightning strikes twice or something along those lines. Uh, but typically here in the World Challenge, we have a 15 minute, what is known as a lone qualifying session where we send racers out. They've got the track all to themselves. They normally get four flying laps in order to set a fast time. Well, things are mixed up, gonna be mixed up a little bit here at Sebring tonight as we can have, we see all of our drivers out on track right now. This yep. is gonna be 15 minutes of qualifying with all the drivers on track at once. The drivers are gonna have as many laps as they need in that 15 minute time uh, in order to set their fast lap, but uh, they're gonna have a lot of traffic to contend with here. That's gonna I mean, mix this... things up. This gets it even some more real world scenario and qualifying is done in open format and most uh, levels of racing. Certainly familiar watching sports car, you watch F1. This is what you get. And we're going to have that here today. So 15 minutes flying laps account at the end. It means space is critical. Now you could also use some draft because as you know anything about Sebring, you got at least three spots you can uh, you can draft, whether it's uh, coming out of this opening sequence all the way around Big Man of the Hairpin, maybe the front straight, maybe the back straight, lots of places to use some of that draft to your advantage. So. This will be an interesting 15 minute session here as we are about three minutes in. Everybody's just starting flyers. Yeah, we've got our drivers now for the most part on their very first flying laps. And so as we've got this going on, we've got uh, drivers. Uh, now we've got some of our first drivers coming into the sunset turn, turn 17 uh, to put their first laps in. Peter Porzacek, the very first racer. And we're starting to see some of the uh, DNA Motorsports drivers complete their laps. We're going to talk about uh, little themed liveries on those cars here in just a few moments but let's do this first larry just for our uh, viewers sake we're going to point out to the three different classes that we have racing here tonight of course we have our gtp cars pretty easy to pick out what a prototype car is and they've got the uh, the black mirrors and black number boards on them and you'll notice on the timing tower on the left hand side of the screen uh, all of those cars are specified in, in black. We then have our two different GT3 classes. We've got our pros and we've got our amps. The pro, the pro drivers like Michael Brooks right here, which uh, to start things up, start things off, goes to the top of the pro leaderboard. The pros have the Rickmotech red number boards and mirrors, windshield banners and end plates on their wings. And you'll see the Rickmotech red colors on the timing tower on the left-hand side of the screen. And then our AM GT3 drivers, much like, let's say, Kurt Roberts here, who is currently your fastest driver in AM in his Mercedes AMG GT3. They've got the green number boards, mirrors, windshield banners, and end plates on the wings. So uh, we'll remind you about that uh, as the broadcast goes on, but that is how uh, you'll be able to tell them apart. But uh, already looking pretty chaotic here. Uh, yeah. As we get a shot there of uh, Kurt Roberts in the Mercedes, just ahead of, uh, trying to catch the number there on that GTP that just went blazing on by. That is uh, 13 of Ben Barrett Glover on the wrong stuff. Yep, from the wrong him. stuff racing, driving the uh, driving the Acura, one of our few wrong stuff racers uh, there in GTP. The majority of them have been racing the GT3 classes uh, for quite some time as we now have Milan Harris going to the top of the leaderboard. He's your fast, well, he was your fastest driver briefly uh, in the number 98 Cadillac, but uh, just after Milan crosses the line, turning in a 144.75, we had Jordan Butler uh, best them by about two hundredths of a second. And then Dominique Ford in the 144 Porsche 963 turns in a, a just absolutely blazing 144.53. And Larry, when I say that's blazing, um, to put things in perspective, during practice this week, the fastest, the fastest driver uh, that we had in GTP, Ben Rose from DNA Motorsports in his Porsche at a 145 flat. So uh, yeah. Dominique Ford already a half second up uh, up on that in traffic. That is moving around this place, considering there's traffic that does make it even harder to find that clear space. We've got a good shot of Bobby Childs there working his way through some of that traffic. Looks like he's got a few moments to himself. At least he said that a quick time. Maybe he'll do a 44 or something. We never know. That That's is Dre Bob from the wrong stuff in his Porsche 911. It looked like uh, he... 
hit the reset button, went back to the pit lane, didn't see whether or not he had impacted the wall or maybe he just wanted to get a change of tires. And uh, he is back out as we're watching now David Steiner, who goes to the top of the leaderboard in his BMW M, uh, M I guess what's that, an M3 GT or M4 GT3. Uh, and uh, turns in a time of 201.17. And uh, that is about 11 hundredths of a second up on the second fastest driver in the class, Kurt Roberts, in his Mercedes. Yeah, Mr. Steiner, of course, one of the Aussies here in this race. Uh, racing all the way from down under so very very cool he does that and guess what he's fast because he can see the future it's already That's tuesday right. where he is <laughs> he, he already knows the results before we even call this race it's pretty he neat does. the way that works for his sake i hope it's a good result <laughs> <laughs> all right that is marlon jones in that lead paw entry and his and... gtp bmw there go marlon does of... not improve yep by the way, a bunch of the GT3 cars have come in and headed back out. So they're basically doing like a flyer or two and going back out. I wonder if they like the fresher tires. That's what I think, first yeah. And second lap. Or, All right, going to the top of the leaderboard, tires. Tanner Dibble in his Porsche 963, the appropriately numbered 963, turns in a 14450. And uh, that is about three hundredths of a second up on Dominique Ford. And so, Larry, as we're watching, uh, as we're watching Dibble right now, and we'll, we'll go to uh, uh, one of our GT3 races here in a moment. You'll notice a lot of the DNA Motorsports cars um, have a specially themed livery that all of these cars are liveried as if they were alligators. <laughs> and we got a. Uh, um, Got a note from Ryan Reisman with a sign. This is gator warning. Alligators are common in this yes. area. They can be dangerous and should not be approached, frightened, or fed. Please give them the respect they deserve and give them their distance. And so uh, we've got the, the gator skin along the, uh, the, the, the top of the car. But on the side, we've got the, the Florida marshes, uh, I guess from uh, not marshes, but the, uh, the swamps in Florida. You can see there on the side some cute little butterflies and snakes, and I think we also uh, have uh, some toucans as well. <laughs> Very there, there it is. <laughs> yep, all kinds of wildlife there represented yep. on this livery. Very, very cool. Yep. Special here for the the DNA team. Is actually, well I guess that would be a person. parrot. I guess that would be that would be a, a Jimmy Buffett uh, reference a there with a parrot. Yeah, yeah, some sort of parrot. Yeah. <laughs> Little, yeah, a little Buffett reference with those parrot heads. All right. The DNA guys are full parrot heads, but you know, they're maybe no, they might be. All right, Dominique Ford now going to the top of the leaderboard. Oh, wow, a 144.27 yeah. in the books. Absolutely. And notice bonkers. how he's on an outlap. So he's actually done four laps officially in the books, but again, there's five minutes left in the session. I think he wanted some fresher tires, so he's gone back and you can look at him now. You can see he do a little bit of weaving. He's trying to warm them back up now that he's got a fresh set, yeah. maybe looking for some track space. Very interesting how these strategies quickly change from thinking you're going to get four solo flyers out there to now saying, I got 15 minutes to manage this qualifying. How do I do it? Yeah, and, uh, and he's got a nice gap there again as he's trying to get some heat in the tires. It's going to be all about gap management as he uh, is going to work his way around, and we'll see what he can do on what we expect to be another fly, another flying lap the next time by. As we take a look at Ken Copeland right now, uh, Copeland was on a flyer. He did not improve, though, on that last lap. He is, a uh, matter of fact, he was almost three seconds, three and a half seconds off of his previous fast lap of a 201.26. He is currently your fourth fastest driver in pro behind Michael Brooks, Chris Thorman, Travis Schwenke, and, uh, here, if we take a look in Am, David Steiner, who we uh, uh, were watching a little bit a little while ago in his BMW, he brings his car down the pit lane, so he may be taking some new tires. Jeff Brooks, who uh, is driving one of the Audi R8s here tonight, and we're watching him right now. He's currently your second fastest GT3 Am racer, and uh, he is, as we take a look at the timing tower there, Larry, what about... Uh, uh, about 500, well, not 500, about 800 of a second 
off of Steiner's times currently. It is very, very close. Uh, down behind him there with, uh, you know, looking at some of those times there between Steiner Brooks and Roberts. Really close there at the front of the GT3 AMs. GT3 Pros, it's the other Brooks who's been moving right here, staying ahead for the time being, ahead of Thorman, Schwenke, and the others. And a little surprising here, Larry, because he's been so strong early on in the season. Our Season 9 AM, GT3 AM champion, he uh, moved up to the pro ranks this season. Leo Dragoto is uh, having some challenges here at Sebring tonight in the Audi. Currently sitting sixth in the in qualifying here uh, with a fast time of 201.48. That is uh, about 17 hundredths of a second. Uh, actually, a little bit more than that, uh, about well, almost half a second off of Dre Devox times in fifth. And uh, so I wonder know. if he's having some traffic issues uh, because right. we have seen him very strong in these right. GT3 cars over the last couple of seasons. Uh, so I'll be curious to see here as he's on his fourth flyer. Is this the lap that he's able to make some movement up here? But as you say, maybe it's just that competitive, that tight. You can see yeah. one second basically covers second through eighth there at GT3 Pro. That is very tight in a two minute lap around this. 6 mile track so maybe this will be the flyer he gets up there or maybe we're just in for a drag him out dog fight tonight in gt3 pro all right and as dragota comes across the line he moves from sixth to fourth as he turns into 201.1 uh, so he goes and leapfrogs both dre divok and ken copeland as well and uh, so it is now two Orion, uh, two Orion racing teammates, Travis Schwenke and Leo Dragota running third and fourth behind D2D's Chris Thorman. And then we've got Michael Brooks uh, in his Lamborghini, the, yeah, uh, the Michael, wrong stuff Lamborghini currently. Your Michael's flying, I tell you. Michael on that, that provisional pole right now in the GT3 field by four tenths over the rest of the field. That's a, that's a very strong performance here. And uh, then Chris Thorman, who's been very strong lately, he's got himself up on the outside of the front row. So this will be a very interesting start with none of our Orion cars right now on the front row. With Swanky and Dragota currently occupying row two. And want to remind everybody that tonight's qualifying session is brought to you by Proforma Elite. If you want to find out more about their services, visit them at www.proformaetg.com. And uh, of course, uh, another one of our great sponsors here, uh, that is Butt Kicker. And uh, once again, at the end of this season, uh, and at our end of season ceremonies, one lucky driver here in the Rick Motek World Challenge will be presented with a Butt Kicker Gamer Plus package valued at $279.95. If you want to turn up the immersion in your sim rig, visit thebuttkicker.com. All right, so we have the clock's expired, but because it's open qualifying, that means these flying laps will count. So as we're looking at right there, Jeff Brooks, he just rubbed that wall coming out of there, maybe a little bit. I saw a few others, probably could be Grant still out there. Even our current pole sitter for GTPs, Dominique Ford, is still out there. So I'd be curious if we see any flyers dropped in here in what well, we call extra time. That's right. So Jeff Brooks did reset his personal best in qualifying, turns into 201.20, but but that was still three one hundredths of a second short of David Steiner's time. So uh, it looks as though uh, we'll likely have Steiner and Brooks are two fastest AM drivers making up row number three here tonight in GT3. Yeah, very, very fast drivers there. And then beyond there, it's a mixture again of more pros, more AMs all side by side. Here's Polly Kui Grant. Kind of wondering when he's going to make his appearance. Currently six. Can he get into the 44s on his last flyer? He moves up the third, wow. Larry, a 144.72, yeah. about half a second off of Tanner, uh, yeah, about a half second off of Tanner Dibble and a little bit more to Dominique Ford, but that would be enough to move our season number, uh, or season number nine, cha actually, I guess, no, I take that back, our season eight champion yeah. uh, in GTP. I think we're at season nine right round. now. Oh, are we? <laughs> I don't even remember. <laughs> Don't be for I'm so yeah, confused. I'll, I'll, I'll accuse you of being in, in down in Australia if you tell me who's going to win the championship. <laughs> <laughs> just just call me Colin. Hey. All right. Uh, All right. So we're just about done. In fact, I think we and, are. And I think we've course. done our share of uh, our share of minute work uh, jokes over, yeah. over the uh, season. Dominic Fork is the last car running. And as soon as he parks it, we will go to 
the grid. The start, and then we'll, right? we'll bring in the season points here as the night goes on. Yes, exactly. But disqualifying was too much fun to watch to, to interrupt it. We're just looking at point standings. We do have an hour and a half, 90 minute race tonight. We got a lot of time to talk about point standings. Yeah, as we as time as uh, this season is starting to wind down, definitely a number of championships that are still in play. But we'll get to that as uh, as time allows. And as you mentioned, Larry, lots of time. If you like what you're seeing here tonight, uh, remember to to go and subscribe to Apex Racing TV. Click that notification bell so you can find out every time we go live. All right, Larry, our drivers starting to grid up. Tell you what, why don't you take the uh, the GTP racers tonight? I'll grab the GT3s. All right, on the pole tonight, we just got done talking about it. He's the last man out there driving around. Dominique Ford on the pole, 44.2, very fast out of Mulfield Motorsports. Alongside him on the outside is gonna be Tanner Dibble from DNA Motorsports, one of our Gator-clad, swamp-clad cars. On the second row of the inside, Polyquee Grant representing D2D Sim Racing alongside another one of those Gator clad cars, the DNA Motorsports, Jordan Butler outside of row two. Row three, it's another DNA Motorsports, Ben Rose on the inside, lined up alongside a Rockefeller Racing, Milan Harris. On row four, from another DNA entry, it's uh, Peter Porzacek. He'll be lined up alongside a teammate, Ryan Reisman. On row five, it's gonna be the second of our D2D entries here in GTP, it's Bobby Childs. Lined up alongside Baron Glover out of the Wrong Stuff Racing. On row six, it's going to be Lay Pro Racing's Elias Alabi alongside Marlon Jones from Lead Paw. And I think we've got one more. Yeah, Bill Mulfield, of course, from Mulfield Motorsports, winding out there in row seven. All right, so let's take a look at our GT3 racers. They are going to be starting uh, with a pretty big gap between they and the GTP cars. And on the front row, we've got Michael Brooks from The Wrong Stuff with Chris Thorman starting to his outside, to his right, uh, the D2D Sim Racing driver. Then we've got Travis Schwenke from Orion and Leo Dragota, his teammate, starting to his right. That'll be row number two. Then we've got our two AM, our top two AM drivers, David Steiner from Dominate Eye Racing with Jeff Brooks from The Wrong Stuff. They are gonna make up row number four. Then we've got Ken Copeland and Dre Divock, both from The Wrong Stuff Racing. Kurt Roberts from Dead Bull Racing and Aaron Beaver, the first of our Rockefeller Racing drivers. Then we've got Jeff Jacobs from one of our series sponsors. That is the SCCA Foundation with Ilya Spiker from Rockefeller. Uh, next up to his to his right, then David Payton from D2D Sim Racing and Alex Brown from Team Collusion. Keith Stein, Leo Dragota, that is, uh, uh, probably Lucas Dragota, that's Leo's former teammate, with Mark Schindel and Andre Wetterburn. Uh, next up with Dan Krim and John Casey, with then Greg Brockway, also from Freedom Sport Racing, Robert Brist, and Josh Vidal picking up the tail end of the field here the Hutch for Hutch Sport Racing. And uh, we'll take a look uh, actually here at Larry Keith Stein uh, did not set a time during qualifying. He is showing as being on the pit lane currently. We'll see if, uh, and he is in the session, so he will likely be starting there from the pit lane in his Lamborghini. Well, the weather does not call for any rain tonight, as again, Rick Wittek hasn't quite introduced rain but what doesn't mean we're going to have any less excitement here. If you look at how close these fields are, certainly in the GT3 Pro, GT3 Am, very, very tight across them. You know, just looking at GT3s in general, combine them all together. Your second outside row qualifier, Chris Dorm, it's a 2010. One second gets you to, oh, we'll call it about, I don't know, about 12 spaces 12. down yeah. to uh, pass his teammate, David Payton, all the way Alex Brown gets you finally into the 202s. That is extremely tight. That pack is going to go on, and that's a mixture of pros and AMs in there. We talked about how uh, Steiner and Brooks have uh, got that row three lock out of the AMs. Well, they'll be fighting with the rest of those pros. It's going to be super, super tight. And in the GTPs, I would not be surprised to see some movement around there. Dominique Ford looks very racy and quick tonight. Tanner Dibble might be able to keep up with him. Polyclee Grant got one good lap in at the end. Maybe he's got a hot tire setup that's better for him. Could be very interesting night. It's a long 90-minute race. Anything is possible. All right, just getting word from uh, race control about uh, Keith Stein. 
um, so that he knows uh, basically race control will tell him when he is released because the pit lane uh, does show as being closed. All right, we'd also like to welcome new sponsor to the Rick Motek World Challenge this season to season number nine, not season number 10, and that is the SCCA Foundation. The SCCA Foundation is a 501c3 public charity that supports the charitable and educational programs to further the Sports Car Club of America's purposes and for the benefit of the motorsports community as a whole. To find out more, visit sccafoundation.org. All right, as uh, Race Control now is asking our GTP racers to start forming up. And oh, and Larry, we've got a car, and I think that was oh, yeah. possibly Marlon Jones. It is, yeah. That spun the car coming out of the final corner, out of Lamal turn 16, or not the not the final corner. But, but out of those S's, yeah. Catch this replay, see what he does. He just catch a little bit of the curbing on the curbing. inside. Yeah, he high centered it on that curb, and looks like Mulefield was able to make his way around him. So, you know, no contact. We're all still good. Yep, and it looks like he retakes his spot anyhow as he was on the back row there uh, with uh, with the other machine, with Marlon Jones. And so, Larry, the pace car now on the pit lane, turning things over to our pole sitter tonight, Dominique Ford, with Tanner Dibble to his right, Paloquy Grant Jordan Butler making up row number two, and the green flag is in the air, and we are racing here at Sebring International Raceway. 90 minutes to the checkered flag for round number six of seven. And uh, here we go as they come down into turn number one for the first time. Dibble oh and Butler. Oh, this is oh. not going to work out well. Oh, and That's one. Ben Rose. That's Ben Rose going around one of our DNA Motorsports entries. He does rejoin, and Larry just inches off the wall there. I thought Lucky he was going to be. I thought he was going to be the bowling ball to take out the pins, but he's out of the way. Here come GT3s. All right, and here we got Michael Brooks, and Brooks comes right across the front of Travis Schwenke, and actually across the front of Chris Thorman from D2D in the Lamborghini. But uh, it is Brooks so far for the wrong stuff. He shoots to the lead going into turn three for the first time. Travis Schwenke trying to come underneath the D2D racer. And that Audi is now going to have to slot into third spot. And it's three Audis in a row. Schwenke in third, Jeff Brooks, and then Leo Dragota with David Steiner, currently your second place AM driver, now running sixth overall in GT3. Yeah, good start there for Jeff Brooks as he's trying to stay in front of, I think that's Leo Dragota as they come into turn seven. He does, but now they're still side by side back in the field. So this is getting a little bit crazy, but I think we've got a replay set up of the Ben Rose spin there in turn one. Yeah, it looked a, look a lot that. more chaotic in GTP, Larry, than it yeah, did in so GT3. Yeah, Rose is in the fifth spot, and there you can see him on the inside, and he just loses it. Yeah, he and just got loose. So close to coming back around, taking out teammate Rowe there as they went by, but yeah. wow, everybody chucked up and managed to miss him. I don't know how. Yeah, we, we almost got three of the DNA, DNA Motorsports <laughs> teammates taken out in one corner, Larry, but uh, uh, yeah. Rose thankfully was able to keep it off the nose of his two teammates ahead and more importantly, yeah. keep it off the wall. As we take a look now, here's Jordan Butler, who was one of those drivers that had to take evasive action in yeah. his DNA Motorsports Acura. Um, he is uh, early on here losing a little bit of ground to our, I guess it was season seven champion, Paolo yeah. Cui Grant uh, in the D2D Sim Racing BMW. Yeah, but it's a, it's a good little race that's going on as they're starting to spread out just a little bit as Ford and Dibble have kind of pulled ahead. But Butler's got a good little battle going on. As we go back to the GT3s, it looks like Leo Dragota was able to get around Jeff Brooks. Let's see if he's able to hold it behind him. It's now a bit of a train there. So Steiner and Copeland, all in this. We've seen Copeland, how fast he is. I think he's our points leader in the, uh, the GT3 Pro GT3 class. Pro. Yeah, so he's down the order a little bit early on. But we know he's got serious pace. In a 90-minute race, he could win this thing from just about anywhere. But that battle between Jeff Brooks and uh, Leo Jagoda seems to have backed everybody up. Now let's see that if they get in line and start catching up to the leaders, the front four. Michael Brooks, of course, leading the way with Thorman, Schwenke, and uh, out in front well, of Yeah, well, it's, it's those three. It's Brooks, Thorman, yeah. and Schwenke at this point as Leo Dragota getting that uh, fairly substantial train ahead. We're on board right now with Kurt Roberts in the 195 Mercedes, and uh, Roberts currently running third in AM. 
And uh, he's got his uh, two AM compatriots just ahead of Ken Copeland's Mercedes. Uh, they're directly ahead. Yeah, it's still a big train in GT3s. That's what I said. We've got a lot of parity in this class right now. But basically, a second covers about a dozen cars. So it's going to depend on who can manage their tires, who's fast on a light fuel load, who's fast on a full fuel load. It may change from how qualifying went when you start throwing in tire wear. This could be a very interesting evening. It's going to get a good shot here. That's uh, Mark Schindel battling it out with uh, uh, Reesman in front of him and whatever behind him. Yeah, oh, I think uh, actually I think Spiker and, and Alex Brown were the two Canadians uh, directly behind uh, Alex Brown in the Ferrari and then uh, Spiker in the 86 in the orange 86 Porsche just uh, 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 that Shindell in the orange 80, in the orange 418 Porsche the, uh, the Porsche just ahead is Spiker and uh, that is what we didn't get done tonight Larry. We were supposed to speak to Ilya Spiker before tonight's race, but I think, I, you know, given that given that we had the uh, the open qualifying session here, kind of uh, threw everybody's plans off to see just a little bit. And it's even got me misreading my own timing screen. That's how crazy things are. All right, well, there's Ken Copeland. That car recognizes. Yes, as he's in that traditional AMG mark. I think it's Steiner then, right behind him. That is uh, indeed. That is the. Uh, the big maw of the BMW of Steiner, uh, the number 63 machine. Steiner takes a quick look to the inside. So, Larry, you know, you were talking about, you know, obviously long race. Uh, tire wear is going to be a factor here, I think, over the course of a 90-minute race. Uh, changing fuel loads also. We, we expect that most of these drivers are going to have to make two fuel stops this evening in order to make it to the checkered flag. And... Uh, yeah. It's gonna. Well, I think the fact that that is going to happen is probably going to uh, much more so than the 75-minute races that we have here, typically in the World Challenge. Really, I think uh, bring a lot more excitement here because we're going to see these drivers. We think that, for example, the GTP cars uh, are likely going to need a splash of, you know, somewhere around. Uh, six and a half gallons, the GT3 cars, five gallons to get to the end. If they run uh, a full tank of gas, uh, both uh, at the start and also at the first stop. And we've got uh, Bobby Childs, well, Larry. There's one car that won't need two stops. No, he, well, he's making one right now. And I think that's probably where he's going to sit for quite some time. Uh, we have two BMW, two GTP BMW drivers, both Bobby Childs and Marlon Jones currently on the pit lane yeah let's, well uh, we know that marlin had that one spin just there on the warm-up lap he may have had another issue and let's see if his and bobby's are connected we may even have that replay ready all right let's take a look at the 88 right. d2d sim racing so that's, machine that's Come turn through one congratulations bobby. bobby made it through one corner hey, wow wow rear uh, lockup like i haven't yeah. seen before I, I was gonna say larry that just appeared as though he might have might have shuffled the uh, the brake uh -huh. bias all I, the way to the rear and I wonder if he had a, I wonder if he had a sim pedals issue. Now we'll see if Marlon Jones, same corner. See if the incident is related. He loses no. it on his way in and just locks it up and spins, and that's as much, maybe more damage even than Bobby's car. But I'm wondering if Bobby had a sim issue. The way that thing locked up hard, it, it shouldn't. At those speeds, you shouldn't get that kind of lock up. So feel bad for Bobby if that's what he had, some kind of a sim related issue. And Tough Larry, this is where we suggest that uh, that Bobby check out our our good friends and sponsor Rick Motech. I think uh, they have equipment. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Well, if things get slow, maybe we'll bring Bobby in here and he can tell us all about it tonight. He's been known to be our added commentator once in a while. It's been a while though. And, and I mean, he's got a wealth of experience from tonight's race, so uh, yeah, he should have a should have a lot to say. to see the GT3 field maybe start to break up into uh, some smaller packs at this point. It's like uh, uh, packs of two and three here. Again, very early days here. We're only, well, we're less than 10 minutes into this 90-minute race as uh, now David Steiner under attack from Kurt Roberts. Uh, the Mercedes taking a quick Ooh, look as they came out of Bishop. That's aggressive. Wow. 
as yeah. they came out of Bishop and did not, did not give it up as they went through the S's there and out of Lamar onto the Omen straight. Yeah. So uh, move, uh, move Steiner now down to uh, looks like eighth in GT and uh, third in AM. Well, I'll tell you what, Kurt Roberts is uh, didn't get the qualifying he wanted, but he's certainly is showing the racing as early on here in this uh, in this race. Now it's just a couple laps in. That was a very racy move that he yeah. threw down on David Steiner, just in the middle of those S's, shoving it down the inside, and then able to hold it all the way down the back straight. And even through, you can see now we've got a car length buffer here going into turn one. So keep your eye on uh, Kurt Roberts. He he just might have the wheels under him tonight. Yeah, you know, and we we said we didn't think we'd see. Uh, a lot of aggression here early on that these drivers might want to uh, uh, keep the tires underneath them for later on in stints and uh, maybe run, uh, you know, as far as that to that maybe that last fuel stop in order to change tires. But uh, uh, I, I think a lot of that, Larry, is that uh, Steiner just didn't expect it. And here, uh, well, this is the battle right now for fourth position. We've got Jordan Butler and Milan Harris. Butler, one of our DNA Motorsports machines there, driving the 172 Acura Harris in his Cadillac. Yeah, now they start fighting through the traffic here. This is where it gets very interesting. That's Wedderburn, I think, right in front of him or next to him or <laughs> depending on where he is. I don't like going to the inside there and after no. having run the 12 hour. I typically, if I'm the faster, like I was running the LMP2 against the GT3s, outside. I go to the outside and hope the GT3 able to stay to their left and I can take the right. That's aggressive to dump underneath and to take that, but it could also well, be where they were coming through 10. Yeah, Look exactly. Well, and you see like right there and just because you've got so much more aero grip yeah. with these uh, with these GTP cars than the GT3 racers do. Yes. Yeah, and just look at how quickly he can dive through those S's and then you got the horsepower of these massive GTP cars all the way down this back straight, passing these GT3s like they're standing still. What are we at? 179 miles an hour, 180 miles an hour down the back straight for these GTPs to 160, I think, top speed of the GT3s. Look at that traffic. And just watching these two pop oh and left, gosh. pop and right. There's three of them you can see in this shot. Butler Harris, and I think, is that Grant just up in front of him? Uh, yeah, I was going to say, it's Poliquy Grant just up front, and I was looking a little bit further back in the field uh, where I think we had Ryan Reisman and Ben Rose, and yeah. they had just come out of 17, and they were looking for a way through as well. That ben Here's Rose the right mess there. right here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So watching the aggressive. Oh, oh there's oh, a pileup. Oh. We didn't see how it got started, but I saw a couple involved there. Rose yeah, managed to get. He does not like that corner tonight, whether it's no. him doing it or something else in front of him. He's, well, this time he got to the corner. The last time he didn't even get there. Yeah, he's definitely checking out the grass all the way around turns two and three. All right, let's take a look. It's, we'll, we'll take a look from Ben Rose's uh, over top. Oh, and so Rose, there was contact. And I believe that was, was that a lot? Look in uh, front of them. Was that look in front. Yeah, you've already got the Porsche sideways. I think that's uh, Divox, perhaps. Divox. All right, let's take a look at the Acura of, of, oh yes. Oh my gosh. Talk about threading the needle, Larry. <laughs> and and I think that was that was oh, actually no. Baron Glover in the number 13 that, Acura that yes. got caught up in that uh, that little thing. It but was you, Glover and then it was Divock was the Porsche sideways in the middle of turn three that caused that the big pile up in there. And Ben Rose managed to avoid that one after, after scaring the wall. So here's Divock. yeah, he's in that pink topped the wrong stuff Porsche coming down and you watch him he's going to lose it just around this apex maybe contact and then the rest of the field doesn't know where to go a little left a little right uh, a lot of folks avoiding what could have been disaster yeah and I th was that Aaron Beaver that uh, was alongside him I think as they were coming through turn three over there and uh, here we go uh, looking at uh, the 12 and the 97 that we've got, uh, so that's Aaron Beaver, yep, and the number 12 machine, which is Dre Divac. Divac. So uh, that yeah. race control is taking a look at that incident now to see if I, there was indeed contact. Yeah, there. that replay, I'm wondering if, if uh, Divac on the left had gotten a little bit of a uh, little bit of fender to fender in there. It would have been very, very close. It looked like it was an attempt at a really good side-by-side -side that may have yeah. just gotten a little bit of 
that code. We'll see if they come back and actually assign anything. I think the rest of the field did a great job of, of veering left and right to avoid them. It's, that's hard to do in that corner because you're you're kind of at the limit when you throw the car into Indeed. that turn three. And very impressive yeah. to not take them out. Yeah, very late apex and uh, somewhat the line there going in. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, yeah. Look at this, though. It's probably Cleet Grant all over the back of Jordan Butler, one of our one of our Gator DNA is there in front of you. You got Milan Harris then right behind them. So this trio, they are they're kind of lost sight of Ford and Dibble out in front, but they've got their own little battle going. Is look at this, shove it down the inside for Grant. Not gonna make it stick though. Let's see if Grant tries to do it again. Oh. Coming in the 16. Nope, he's gonna hold up. Oh, wow, but he's, look, Milan Harris, Harris trying tried. to do the exact same thing. <laughs> he saw. He said, "Oh, you're gonna do it at the first one. I'll do it at the last the one." But second, didn't make yeah. it stick. Look at that. The sun is the, already The problem is Harris didn't get a good run out of 16, and he drops back just a little bit. By the way, I'm starting to get really hungry. As Bobby's talking about a bowl of Rocky Road, and Stubby comes in with three slices of cheesecake. Come on, guys. Got to share some of the dessert here with the commentators. Just saying. Isn't Send there a minimum weight to these, these GTP quarters? <laughs> <laughs> hey, not if you're a spectator. That's, that is true. I, I, and I was going to say, he's going to have, Larry, uh, Bobby's going to have, what, I think three weeks? Uh, no, just, uh, yeah, three weeks yeah. to to work that weight off because uh, coming up in the next couple of weeks here on the, uh, in the Rick Motex, different Rick Motex series, first off, no racing next Monday. We are off for uh, Easter Monday or April Fool's Day as Bobby uh, looks at it. And uh, then in two weeks, April 8th, Monday, April 8th, it is round number seven of the Touring Car Cup. That's uh, the series for the MX-5 and GR Cup, uh, GR86 Cup cars. It's gonna be at my home track, Summit Point Raceway for two 30 minute sprint races. And then, the, then on April 15th, is the World Challenge finale. We're going to be heading uh, back to uh, the eastern side of the, the eastern side of the world. We're going to be heading back to Japan. We're going to be going to Suzuka. 75 cool. minute battle uh, to round out the well, World Challenge. Speaking of battles, this is the battle for first overall. Yes. Donnie Ford leading Tanner Dibble. These guys are nose to tail. I don't have to tell you the gap between them because you can see it. Uh, Dibble really putting the pressure on. We know that Ford had the pace in qualifying, but I'm thinking Tanner Dibble's got a great race set up here as he's been able to pressure the back of Dominic Ford the last couple of laps there. You can see the graphic. Some of that ups and downs might have been just uh, going traffic. through traffic. Yeah, but uh, Dibble looking very strong. I wonder if he's kind of holding a little bit back because there should be some good draftability with these, but perhaps they're just trying to gap the field of Grant, Harris, and Butler there behind them and make sure that there's, this is a two-man battle all the way to the end. There is the Grant, Harris, and Grant made his way past. And yeah, let's take a look at the replay because remember you had, there's Grant already gotten past Butler. Now you got Harris eyeing up the Butler. Gets oh. Him inside at sunset. Beautiful. Yes. You know, and, and we had seen Larry on the previous lap where the DNA car had the, the back end kind of step out on him yeah. and oh, uh, took a very this similar line. Oh, wow. Here we hey, go. Coming into the hairpin at seven. Yeah, Harris trying to get underneath Grant. He's got a little momentum and he's on that left side. You'll have the apex here at the kink. And they'll go side by side, I bet, through 10. This is a tight, tight corner in these big cars. He's gonna back off a little bit. There's contact at both ends of, of Harris. Yes, yeah, as, as they all three accordion <laughs> up there. <laughs> wow, plenty of room to the left and right, not so much forward and back here. Oh, as it reminds me of one of, those, one of those three stooges sketches where they all start punching each other at the same yeah. time. It's kind of what's going on there with Harris getting kind of, you know, he was, he was the Larry in the Mullen Curly sandwich. <laughs> Opposed to you being the player in the world. <laughs> God. Oh. Let's see, I know right, we're going to be, just... be talking <laughs> Laurel and Hardy. <laughs> Who's the on first, commentators. Do not make the other commentator laugh so much that you lose control of the broadcast. All right, so <laughs> as uh, Grant continues on this tr uh, threesome to, uh, to lead the way, Harris has rubbed the wall there coming out of sunset. They have now started to gap Butler just a little bit. A bit. So we'll see if this closes back up. 
uh, here as the lap goes on. But it's, it's a great fight. This is probably our best battle, actual fighting going on on the track. Yeah, and Larry, our, our top five GTP cars for the last really three laps, they've had no GT3 traffic that they've had to worry about. So they've just been able to stretch their legs and go at it for a while as uh, we now jump over uh, to GT3, speaking of which. And uh, wow, we've got, uh, this is the fight now for second with Travis Schwenke uh, in the Orion Audi. We've got Chris Thorman in the D2D Lamborghini just ahead. And as uh, with Schwenke trying to take that mm. inside line. I like that line, if you can make it stick. Yeah. It just puts him on the outside of one, though, and that's not where you want to be. You got to right. hit that wall on the inside of one. Is he going to make it stick? If he can, I mean, have yeah, run. you have to carry so much more distance uh, the way did he it. did it there, but he made it work. Wow. And so now Shrunky moves up in the second, but Michael Brooks in the meantime, just yeah. in that, that sequence there, Michael Brooks picked up, I think, about four. Uh, uh, actually closer to like 20 car lengths now yeah hey we're gonna have to catch uh what just went on here because that guy Tanner dibble is now leading this race yes. by a pretty good margin over dominique fords so we're gonna have to line up the replay here and there it is it's the two of them and, and as we were talking about there not being any traffic larry well, but also oh, look no. at the yeah, oh, no. I was just going to say, just as we were showing that uh, showing that sequence up at the top of the screen, we saw yeah. race control come up that they were going to be investigating uh, well, contact between the 93. It's and, possible. Tanner uh, Dibble's lead will not be very uh, long one here. As, yeah, uh, so Dominic Ford now on the pit lane. Oh, well, this wow. is interesting. Then that battle we were watching there between Grant Harris and Butler may end up being the battle for the lead. Once, if they assign a penalty to uh, Dibble, my guess right. is at this stage they might make him take a drive through or they could assign a, uh, a significant uh, penalty Time at the end of the yeah. race. Uh, given the nature that it was for the lead of the race, they may be a little more harsh than in some other cases. But look at this Grant and Harris side by side. Again, this could be for the lead if there's penalties to be given to Tanner Dibble. These guys, I don't even think they realize. Oh, this is good stuff, though. Side by side. Oh, wow. Set down through 10 as they come up here towards tower. Weaving through traffic and he's trying to stay out of the way. I think that's Keith Stein there. Stein. And that Lamborghini trying to just stay out of the lead, out of the way of these two. This is where the incident happened between the leaders a moment ago. Hopefully you don't see the same thing go twice. Yeah, so coming up on, I think, Greg Brockway just uh, just ahead there. Yeah. In the, uh, the purple Ferrari. Ron Harris is very racy, and now Jordan Butler has joined the has joined the session. <laughs> now we're back to our three. Yeah, I was going to say, yeah, the, that gave the DNA Motorsports driver all the opportunity he needed to get back into this fight. Yep. Wow. Oh, this is such good stuff. Just waiting on the officials to make a ruling on Tanner Dibble. Any penalty could hand the lead over to this threesome here. But again, if it's only, let's say, a 10 or 20 second penalty post race, Dibble still has a shot to win this thing. He's 12 seconds ahead of these guys, and we're only 20 minutes in to a 90 minute race. This, this, these guys are racing like they're Miatas. Yeah. yeah. This and, is awesome. And, right. And, and well, Larry, if he only gets a 10 second post race, uh, let yeah. the you know he's thinking let these three keep fighting because right yeah. now he's lapping almost three seconds a lap faster. Drive. Well, they're they're assessing penalties. There you go. Drive, drive through penalty. Him. Yeah. A drive, drive through, through penalty for, for Tanner Dibble. For Tanner Dibble. Okay, that's going to end up costing him probably closer to about thirty seconds. I, we may have gotten a couple of those in the twelve hour last weekend. <laughs> <laughs> As you exceed the number of off-track incidents, you do have to do a drive-through. So let's see how that plays out as there oh, is a... Uh, oh, no! Yes. That's Harris. That's Harris, who is part of that fight as he now goes around. Yeah, that's down let's, there near Tower. Let's get yeah, the replay. Yeah, that's turn 13, the Tower turn. Let's see, is they're, they're trying to weed, weed their way through this GT3 traffic. Oh, you know what? I can oh. see. Okay, so... Grant, who then also makes the initial contact, he 
he had kind of lunged one way. I think the GT3 car didn't know which way he was going to go. Yeah, and we saw and, Grant, and Grant come out of the came, throttle. Yeah, Grant jogged the other way right into the path, it looked like, of Harris. Harris yeah. And I think that's probably where that's going to hurt him the most. So what that does, it lets Grant... Grant's got damage. He's going to be hurting, it looked like, uh, as well as possibly to Harris. And so Dibble is taking now. his... Yeah, so Dibble's finishing up his drive-through, yep. and that moves Jordan Butler now up into the lead. Yes, it's going to be several seconds now. I told you, it's about 30 seconds is what this delta is going to be. So don't be surprised he's 15 seconds down. He's seven seconds down. So it's you know maybe it's a 20-second penalty. As you can see right there, the whole rear end uh, wing and everything missing from Polyquy Grant car as he comes in. He'll be in repairs for a while. He's out of the contention for this race. But right now... Butler now about six and a half seconds ahead of Tanner Dibble after the penalty has, uh, has been served. All right. Yeah, and, and they're looking right now, Larry Race Control is looking at that incident there between the 98 of Paul, uh, between the 71 of Paulo Cui Grant and the 98 of Mulan Harris as soon as we get some information on that and if a decision was made we'll let you know or well you may yeah. see it up on based the screen on that replay you. yeah you could assign penalty to grant as he was the car that did the movement i can understand how instincts kind of kick in when you see your gt3 in front kind of jog left to right you're going to do the same but at the end of the day he's the lapping car in the G ahead of that gt3 he, he should be in control of his gtp let's see if the stewards agree when they make the ruling all right, this is the battle for fifth in GT3 Am, Larry. Uh, we've got uh, Ilya Spiker, and uh, directly behind Spiker is Mark Schindel. <laughs> as everybody starts to fan, well, that's because the, the GTP cars are, are fanning out. Right behind them, we've got Jeff Jacobs, who's running sixth in pro. But uh, this, the two Porsches, Spiker and Schindel, uh, are both, you can see the green number boards and mirrors. They are in our Am category. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and Aaron Beaver and his Mercedes a little bit further up the road. He's already rounded turn one, and I think almost nine seconds ahead of this pair. So the, the one driver I'm kind of curious as to where he's going to end up now is Ken Copeland, who comes in yeah. here with a, I believe he comes in as our leader in GT3 Pro points. He is stuck right now behind the three leaders in AM. And so he's got uh, Brooks... Jeff Brooks, that is, Kurt Roberts and David Steiner in front of him, which is why, if you look at the standings, Copeland's fifth in class, 11 seconds 11 back because seconds he's back. got these three uh, three other cars in between he and the fourth place of Leo Jagoda. So yeah. Copeland really struggling here. And again, we're only about a third of the way through the race, but if he wants a chance to be on the podium, he's going to have to find his way around these three really tough competing GT3 amp drivers. Hey, and so, hey, John, uh, just to give you a heads up, you, uh, I think we've got a little bit of time here now. Why don't we take a quick look back at our last round? That was at Watkins Glen International, uh, where we had two 35-minute sprint races. Uh, I think the very first time the World Challenge has ever gone to a sprint race format. And unfortunately, neither Larry nor I were able to make that event. Uh, but in GT3 AM, the wrong stuff's Jeff Brooks took the win in both races. Ilya Spiker, who again, we were we had hoped to speak to tonight. Uh, and who knows, we may still be able to speak to him uh, here, depending on how this race ends up. He finished second in both races and Aaron Beaver finished third in both. Uh, and if we take a look at the point standings now in GT3 AM, it's Aaron Beaver currently with an eight point advantage over Jeff Brooks, the Rockefeller Racing uh, driver of Mercedes there with Jeff Brooks. Uh, oh, actually, you know what? Let me let me restate that, I think. Oh yeah, I got it right. Hey, believe it or not, I got it right. It's Beaver, then Brooks, <laughs> then Alex Brown. Oh my God. And uh, Team Collusions uh, uh, there, Alex Brown is sitting 22, second, 22 points out of the championship. David Steiner, 28 points back. And then Ilya Spiker, even with those two second place uh, finishes, uh, he is currently sitting fifth in the AM championship. If we jump over to Pro, uh, much like we had in AM, we've got uh, the same driver winning both sprint races. That was Michael Brooks from The Wrong Stuff. Uh, as he took the checkered flag in both in his wrong stuff Lamborghini. Robert Hartley finished second in race number one. Leo Dragotis uh, third in race number one. 
And in race number two, Ken Copeland finished second, Leo Dragota finished third. The championship standings currently in GT3 Pro, as you mentioned, Larry, it is Ken Copeland with yeah. that massive three point champion, uh, three point lead in the championship. And real quick, Larry, I, I wanted to jump in here. Milan Harris has been assigned responsibility wow. for the incident with Palakui Grant. He has been given a drive through penalty. Oh, I wanted to get wow. that uh, get that out. Yeah, I did, didn't expect to see that, but uh, well, that's that's how it how it goes. And so uh, now Milan Harris currently sitting fourth. Uh, we're probably going to see him lose at least one position. Ryan Reisman's only eight, I think, what about eight seconds back uh, right now. Um, so we'll, we'll see here. But uh, in GT3 Pro, it's Copeland with uh, 202 points. It's three points up on Michael Brooks. Another eight points back to Leo Dragota from Orion Racing, and then Robert Hartley's uh, Robert Hartley from Orion Racing currently sitting fourth in the championship. Jeff Jacobs sitting in fifth and if we look at gtp finally uh tanner dibble took the win in race one milan harris took the win in race two at watkins Glen, and the point standings now milan harris with 181 points tied with bailey petrowski who's not here uh, tonight exactly who the uh, the d2d bmw driver not here this evening and uh, i'll tell you it's all it's awful close. close jordan butler yeah. the top five or four points apart yeah and so butler who is currently leading this race he is only three points back from the yeah. leader tanner dibble He's only a point back from there. He's only four points off, and Dibble's tied with Paolo Cui Grant. Yeah, this is, and that was the battles that were going on there with Harris and Butler and Grant. You see those guys come in with just four points between them. Now you've got Harris serving a penalty. Grant's getting repairs. Butler's leading this thing. Dibble's chasing him down. This is just getting crazy here in this GTP field. Yeah. Uh, and meanwhile, Bailey Petrowski, hopefully he's watching in tonight wondering what the points are going to look like come tomorrow morning but uh, he's going to, have to get back here for the finale if he wants any chance to win this championship and larry we're also now uh showing and i believe this is drive through penalty that was just assigned uh, dre yeah. divok in the number 12 porsche he's coming down the pit lane now he was already sitting at the tail end of the gt3 field well no he's sitting in a pit stall now he's not driving down the pit lane but it just received word of another drive through penalty that had been assigned that I was fairly certain it was the 12 car. Yes, so, uh, we'll see so earlier on you had the incident between the 12 and the 97 that was Correct. considered to be a racing incident, no penalty between Aaron Beaver and Dre Divac. Another incident between involving uh, Dre Divac, this time was with the 64 of David Payton, this time a drive through penalty assigned to Dre Divac. I don't think we've seen a replay of that yet, but I can tell you that Divac and Payton are both still on the pit lane. Yes. Payton's been there for three minutes. Yeah, and D and Divac drove the car in, and uh, all right, and it looks like uh, John's able to pull up that replay. Let's take a look and see what happened. So there he is coming down the back straight into sunset. It looks like Divac gets aggressive to go to the inside. Peyton was just taking a late apex line, and yep. there's contact. Divac sits there in that blind spot Oof. for a while. I can tell you that is a tough, tough spot to be. Yeah, so he was able to drive the car back down the pit lane, but obviously a good amount of damage there, and I'm sure that last little tap to the rear didn't help. He is going to have to, uh, well, well and it, yeah, I was going to say he's going to have to serve that uh, drive through yeah. at another time, and I think, Larry, he may have just checked out of the session. So we'll, yeah, possibly. Well, well let's, let's uh, check in with the GT3 battles, because this is Ken Copeland and David Steiner. They're in different classes. Steiner's running third of the amps. Copeland's at fifth in the pros. Copeland's a point leader in the pro by that mi minor, minor margin there to Michael Brooks, but he's a big deficit down here in this race to Michael Brooks. He's helping himself by getting around Steiner, but he still needs to get around Jeff Brooks and Kurt Roberts, the other two am drivers, if he thinks he's got a shot to win this thing. As we take a look at who's in the pits right now. And Tanner Dibble. Dibble and Ben Rose came down the pit lane uh, pretty much, no, well, not nose to tail, but they came down the same time. They are the first of our GTP racers to pit in. Ryan Reisman now coming down the pit lane. 
And uh, as we're right at the top of the hour, Larry, we're starting to see drivers come in for their very first service in GT3. Travis Schweike and Leo Dragota, uh, who were running second and third in uh, GT3 Pro, they are coming down the pit lane now. See them pitting in together. All these teammates, you got the Orions coming in together. You had those DNA GTP cars coming in together. Two by two, like Noah's Ark here in pit lane at Sebring. Or the case of DNA, there were three of them. <laughs> and Reisman uh, takes his tires and he heads out. And I, I, given how long they're sitting on the pit lane here, Larry, I'm thinking that most likely um, they're taking on their uh, their full tank of gas, so we'll see that little splash at the end mm -hmm. for these racers. But let's do this. Let's take a quick little break uh, as we're up at the top of the hour. We'll thank some of our partners and sponsors, and when we come back, we'll take you all the way to the checkered flag here at Sebring International Raceway where you are watching round number, what is this? It's round number six of the Extreme Motorsports Rick Motec World Challenge here from Sebring. We'll be right back. Rick Motec, high performance sim racing equipment. Whether you're just looking to have fun, train for race day, or become a serious esports competitor, Rick Motec has you covered. Hundreds of name brand parts. Support from experts that love sim racing. Trusted by the pros. There's only one place to go RickMotec.com. SCCA Foundation is a 501c3 organization serving as the charitable arm of the Sports Car Club of America. One of the programs partially funded by the foundation is the SCCA Academy, an online learning management system used to keep real-life racing track officials up to date on the highest standards of race safety and officiating. Through this program, the SCCA Foundation is supporting the future of the best trained corner workers and event officials in motorsport. You can support these efforts at www.sccafoundation.org. search is over. The most comprehensive league scoring solution is here with the ability for multi-level championships, custom incident tracking, post-race time penalties, support for heats, drop weeks display, multi-car team scoring, advanced web widgets, rookie championships, a custom paint system, and load those results in seconds. Visit extremescoring.info today. Rick Motec, high performance sim racing equipment. There's only one place to go, rickmotec.com. And welcome back to Sebring International Raceway and round number six of the Extreme Motorsports Rick Motec World Challenge. I'm Greg Ginsburg along with Larry Lefty McLeod. And Larry, there is our overall leader, Jordan Butler. Hasn't taken his first pit stop yet, but uh, He's got, uh, well, what? I think he's got about 35 seconds right now on Milan Harris, uh, who, is, who also has not taken a stop yet. And uh, for one of the first times, it looks like he's got no GT3 traffic <laughs> for as far as the eye can see. Well, we figure he should be coming in for his at least first fuel stop here soon. Pretty soon. Maybe yeah, we'll we catch thought... him as he's doing it now, maybe, just maybe. Yeah, we, th we thought that the, the GTP cars could probably do about 22 laps on on a uh, full complement, on a, a full tank of fuel. Ironically, guess Butler's what lap working. we started. Yeah, and yeah, Butler's this... working lap 22 right now. Yeah. And then behind him, you know, Harris, and then Ford, five seconds behind Harris, Dibble, another five seconds behind Ford. So 
they're kind of you know spread a little bit point to point there two three four and five the question is how far down the order will butler go when he does stop because uh, if he's in his pit stall for 30 seconds it's about a minute total delta that should put him right at the back behind rose I think. behind rose baby yeah i think it's going to depend because some of these guys have little faster pit stops than others. If they're planning on two stops, they'll take different loads of fuel. But that is Milan Harris coming in for his stop. Harris is coming in right behind him. I think that's Daniel Krim in his Mercedes, the 47 car. Yeah, so Harris, of course, was involved in the incident there. And then, of course, had the penalty assigned to him. So he's already served a drive through which is probably why he was down the order a little bit. Right. He's got a lot of work to do. As things go and then a warning has been given to car five which is ben rose so the mm. incident there with the 64. the 64 that would be uh david, david payton. payton so it's only a warning given to rose for that though of course payton was also involved in the incident with trey debach the debach was given right. a penalty for it. so payton yeah, and, out of this and that's race payton now. that we just saw sitting on the pit lane yeah the uh, the black out. and green lamborghini as right. we now have michael brooks we who was our gt3 leader yeah we've got brooks pitting in we've got chris thorman from d2d pitting in yep. uh ken copeland now going to the lead uh copeland not pitting in in gt3 but there's kurt roberts and david steiner's bmw huh and then behind them Ilya uh, Spikers. spiker yep so you got a whole Rocket bunch Porsche. interesting like you had said though that the one that did not was ken copeland and i was wondering copeland's been dominant at times this season and I was wondering, when is he going to turn it on? Was he doing a fuel-saving strategy? Was mm -hmm. he trying to do this on a one-stop? Is he trying to really shorten these stops, save his tires, and maybe now he can kind of uncork the beast and see how this goes? Let's, I'm really curious about the strategy for our points leader, Ken Copeland. Well, this also gets him clear, Larry, uh, yeah. of, of all of the AM drivers that uh, he was caught behind, I think. And, you know, and he may have been pretty well suited just sitting behind them again in fuel saving mode uh we'll see what happens here as he's got uh, a couple of laps turned on the gt3 cars uh we mentioned the gtp drivers we think could do somewhere around 22 laps the gt3 cars about 19 and ken copeland's currently working lap 20. so yeah. uh so I was wondering, Get maybe he did a little fuel saving to sort of extend this and yeah. and make his later stops even less. He's done that before. He's done. We've seen him at Daytona working with a teammate to save a bunch of fuel. We've seen him execute a couple of different strategies and be able to pull out wins with them. So I'll be curious if he can maybe extend this by another lap, because if he does it in the lap, he get really close to that 45 minute mark, which is halfway. Maybe he does this on a one stopper. And so I'd be really curious if he can pull that off. Also noting in the chat is Bailey Petrowski has checked in. Apparently he's been down with uh, pneumonia, he says here mm. in the chat. So uh, wishing him uh, getting better here soon there, Bailey, and get back out here. Definitely understand why you wouldn't want to be spending a few hours staring at a sim rig uh, in that condition. So feel better, buddy. Dominique Four has... Got the car back running again after that contact earlier with uh, Dibble. Yeah, and Dibble's, and Dibble's right there with him, Larry. So has Ford taken his fuel stop? So Dominic Ford, I uh, do not believe so. Um, I, I see a shortstop. He may have done like a... The, well, I thought he had the... Didn't, didn't uh, he have a... a drive-through penalty early on i thought uh not four no 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 well that was dibble that's right that was that was tanner dibble with the uh the 963 car well, that's and, right and they're at it again yes <laughs> these two but i'm wondering did ford just come in for the early splash and take the longer fuel stop later hoping later to track yeah. position now and uh, what that's done is it, it's put him right alongside his rival tanner dibble so very interesting if that's what's going on here for ford what kind of pace he's got his last lap for ford was a 48 6 devils a 46 9 but you can't always tell we'll get an idea now how quick is ford defending against dibble and is he able to hold him off certainly straight line speed if there's any body damage to the i say to the porsche but they're both driving porsches yeah they're both driving porsches and and malaria here oh wow and as 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 
Ford mm -hmm. runs a little wide. He's going to give up the position there coming through turn nine. I was going to say, just as we were listening and watching this view off the back of Dominic Ford's car, it sounded as though he might be down on fuel um, as it sounded like that engine was, it wasn't cutting out, but it, it wasn't a smooth acceleration. I was trying to determine maybe, well, maybe it was yeah. TC. I, it I just, could have been, it yeah. could have been that. It could have just been him getting too close to the grass edge on driver's left or popping those curves. Yeah. The curves go massive three-dimensional there uh, yeah. around that turn 11 and 12. So possible that's all it was, but let's see what kind of straight line speed he's got. He's not into the draft behind Dibble. So I'm wondering if he's a little bit hampered there. Well, oh, oh, he's staying out. Got a lot of slide there at the end of that sweeper, and that's how he's going to lose ground to Tanner Dibble. Dibble's definitely faster at this stage. Yeah, and Ford's still struggling for grip as well. Yeah. Running a little wide there in one in the Bullfield Motorsports Porsche. Well, Ken Copeland, I think, is still out there just to kind of check in with him, working lap 22 now for Ken Copeland, which we're at the 44 and change mark out of 90. He'll be and past he, the 45 minute mark when he goes by start finish. And and we, we've been saying that the, the transit times here are what, close to a minute? I yeah. mean, so, and he's got about a 34 second advantage right now. So that would put him. And here's the other thing, observation mm -hmm. is last lap. And I think he's been pretty much in the open clean air here. His last right. lap was a 2.022. Running right, right on his best of a 2019 as Jordan Butler now Comes coming in, in from, from the lead. lead. Yeah. yeah. But uh, for Copeland, running right on that same target time, it looks like right around 202 flat, where some other drivers are running overall quicker laps. And I do wonder if perhaps Copeland's trying to do this on a single stop. Right on Butler. I'll, I'll, I'll tell you where he's seven. Uh, for these cars actually for the gt3 would be about five gallons that he would need to save that's that's a heck of a lot <laughs> it is it <laughs> Give, is given all the flat out running here that's a lot it'd be fascinating if he could pull it off as he's out of his pit stop or going into the pits now as ken copeland yeah. all right so now tanner dibble goes back up to the lead in gtp as jordan butler is still on the pit lane and here here we go ken copeland taking on fuel and he's got about 30 seconds interestingly for course. copeland now though look at this you're at 46 point you know 46 and 12 46 15 by the time he actually starts moving he'll be almost 46 and a half minutes or see the other way 44 and a half minutes or 43 and a half minutes from the finish I think he's going to he do this on do one it. stop. Yeah. yeah. So keep your eye on that Delta now as he rejoins right about 46 and a half minutes. Wow. Into this race. This is going to be very interesting if he pulls this off. All right. So he still has the two AM drivers. He's got Brooks and Roberts that he's going to have to contend with. Well, if he can um, get behind them, he can save yeah. some fuel. <laughs> right. Well, he's, he's only three seconds back, and he's three seconds back from Roberts. So yeah. I, that's, I think, doable given the pace that he's capable of running. He does stay ahead of Steiner. Remember, for a while, he was sort of stuck right. or staying behind Steiner. He comes out in front of him on track, and you can see that BMW, the white BMW behind him of Steiner. Yeah. Let's see here what it takes is uh, Copeland probably tries to get these tires up to temp. Well, out in front of the GT3 Pros is the points rival to Copeland. That is Michael Brooks. Brooks. Comes in. What did we say? It was a two-point difference between them. Yeah, and Pro, the two points. Drivers. Yeah. They, get, they are teammates. <laughs> yeah, as as I think we've we've established, like, <laughs> that, that being a teammate, I think, extends to uh, to practicing and working on setups together, but pretty much well, on race day. Remember, you flash back to Daytona earlier in this season, and these two guys worked well 
to actually do a bump draft scenario True. and save fuel between Brooks and Copeland. Now, I think at the end, it was Copeland that got the win at that race, if I'm yeah. not mistaken. I can, I can pull it up. That was what round two is. I happen to be looking at the point standings yes. here. Yes, it was Copeland that ended up winning that race. Brooks took third, which gave him a six-point differential in that race alone. So should this thing come down to these two drivers, and right now they're the top two, could the help that Brooks provided to Copeland end up giving Copeland the overall season win? We don't know, but it certainly is a great back and forth between them. It's uh, shaping up to be a pretty fun thing to watch. Speaking of a fun thing to watch right behind Copeland, oh boy. this is, is this Porzacek and Reisman? I think it is. Yeah, yeah, I think it is. Or is it? Yeah, it's, it's Ryan Reisman and yeah, the, okay. Oh, and Milan Harris, pardon me. The 414 and the 98 this is uh, currently the battle for sixth. But, uh, yeah. Earlier, it was Reisman's teammate, I think, that was battling with uh, Milan Harris. But these, there's gators all over this track. That yes. <laughs> well, well, and of course, you know, little little known fact if you've never been to Sebring is that the uh, the concession stand, the food stand at the track is called the Gator Shack. Oh, there you go. Did they sell like deep fried gator? No, no, grilled chicken sandwiches. <laughs> tastes like gator. Tastes taste like, like chicken, gator? Larry. <laughs> <laughs> Who knew? <laughs> yeah, exactly. All right, so this is interesting. Watching the lines of. Uh, the trailing car here in Harris, and I'm wondering if he's getting a little bit of arrow wash because he's having trouble making a uh, turn in at a couple of these uh, tighter corners, riding in behind that uh, Ryan Reisman's wave of air. So starting to wonder if maybe that's actually difficult to do with cars if you're running a lot of wing, get caught in somebody else's air wash. They're going around one of the D2D drivers, one on either side, right around the Chris Thorman, sitting in fourth place there in GT3 Pro, and he's got a pair of GTPs just Wrapping around them. Uh, they're going to catch now. It looks like the front of the field in GT3 Pro. That yeah, looks like Dragota and Schwenke. Yeah. Yep. Those two guys are doing all they can to catch up to Michael Brooks. They're, they're staying at the three second mark. This isn't going to help when they've got a battling pair of GTPs going around them. Go left, go right, go left, go right. Lights the flash, excuse me, pardon me, I'd like to come through, and they do. Ooh. Barely. As, yeah, barely as uh, Schwenke <laughs> has to adjust mid-corner. Let's see how uh, nice they are to uh, Michael Brooks here in a few minutes. Uh, in a couple of corners up the road here when they catch him. Hey, look, there he is. Probably right there in the tower. We've seen contact in this stretch of the track here between GTPs and GT3s. Do they split them? They each go to the driver's right. In through the tower. Man. Brooks flashed the lights back. Yes, I saw yeah, you Yeah, well, yeah, because he, he he had to square that corner. He had to square the tower corner up at the very last second there. I think he, he yeah. almost ran into exactly what Schwenke came well, up with a couple of quarters also, earlier. There also is that thing where Brooks is leading the GT3s. He's in a battle with these two cars two and a half seconds behind him. Yeah. These two coming through are fighting for seventh. Six. They're seventh, yeah. Yeah, and, and there is something to that to say, wait a second, you guys are fighting for seventh. Maybe I actually have priority, but look at this. They're fighting all the way into sunset. They managed to get through, but not after a few cones lose their lives. There, yes. in the case of uh, Ryan Reisman <laughs> taking them out. Uh, and you know, Larry, interest <laughs> interestingly enough, there was a patch to iRacing this past week, and one of uh -huh. the fixes was that a couple of cones had yeah. to be righted at Sebring, and I, th and yes. I think uh, Reisman just knocked them down again. Well, I know which ones <laughs> are, they are, and they're about to come up with them. It's down in turn seven. It's the yeah. uh, it's the uh, uh, the brake markers on driver's left going into the hairpin at turn seven. It used to be, and we'll see this in a moment, Drivers left the first row of five. The one on the inside was yeah, actually laid yeah. down. Well, you, can now, see, you can see the one that's upside look. down. There's it's one that's now upside, upside down. down sitting there, the, the four yeah. cone stack. It used to be close to the track. Now it's kicked back. I don't know why. Why couldn't they just stand them up? It's a sim. It's Florida. <laughs> As an autocrosser, it bugs me. 
toes should be standing or pointers should be at the base. I'm just saying. I'll end my rant now. <laughs> I'm across for some reason. Anyway, all right. <laughs> <sighs> Jeff Jacobs, you need to ask for a new commentator. <laughs> <laughs> Not after what I denote, donated to the foundation in the last six months. <laughs> I thought I, I bought myself another two seasons. <laughs> Little did you know, Greg doesn't get paid to do this. He pays to do this. That's right. <clears throat> All right, Larry, here's another incident between the 963. That's Tanner Dibble. And the, what was that? Was that the, the 97 or the 87? The 97 of Aaron Beaver. Let's uh, let's take a look and see what happened with uh, Mr. Dibble's Porsche. Oh, here we go. Well, he's trying to make his way through here, and that's how you do it. An aggressive way through, both yeah. spin and continue. I suspect we're about to see the 963 getting his second penalty of the evening. Yeah, and, and he has about, a, what, about nine seconds right now on Ben Rose. Yeah, it's deja vu all over again, as Dibble had about a 10-second lead on uh, a couple of cars when he had to serve his first drive through. He got his way back up there, and now he may be serving another. Let's wait till the officials make their uh, their determination. But if he has another drive through, he'll be dropping at least one, maybe two spots. We might see him again have a battle with Dominique Ford. We'll wait and see. Yes, does anyone want to win GTP tonight, as, as our director John says? And I'm starting to wonder. <laughs> and that is Dominique Ford coming in for his second stop. So I, I thought maybe the first was a splash stop. This should be a little bit longer. Probably in the range of 30 to 40 seconds of fuel time, I suspect. All right, well, there's Travis Schwenke and Leo Dragota sitting there second and third. The two Orion cars. You can see that pink Lamborghini out in front of them. That is Michael Brooks now with the lead back around three seconds. So it's been hovering there, but uh, Brooks doing a good job of keeping these two at bay. And every time one of the GTP cars comes through, we see Travis Schwenke flash his lights in, in disapproval. Yeah. Because he did it again. Well, they're about to come through again. Is that's the 963 at Tanner Dibble? Race leader coming up on their <laughs> six. Probably right in the middle of Sunset Bend. <laughs> and, and here oh, comes. There you go. Right in the middle of Sunset Bend oh, goes oh, a gator. Oh. <laughs> They'll get you anywhere, those gators. Jump over the wall and bite you. Now, let's see here, because Devil's going to probably come up with Michael Brooks right around the entrance to turn three. Well, look, he's going to be nice and wait until he gets through. Oh, he's going to dive right there. Does he get the flashing lights? Nope, not no. that time. As the gap is down to two and a half seconds now between Brooks and the Schwenke Dragota teammates behind. Teammates ought to be doing some bump draft. You know, maybe they can kind of catch up there a little bit, at least a push draft. Or save some fuel by the trailing car doing a little lift and coast, swap spots, and the two of them could have a shorter pit stop and have a good chance to catch Brooks in the pits. But that's the one thing we don't know is if they have to make a second stop, how much fuel did they take on the first time and how much are they gonna need the second time? This should have a lot to do with the outcome of this race. All right, Larry, just got word, Tanner Dibble, he has received incident responsibility for uh, what we saw a little bit earlier with the GT3 car. He has received another drive through penalty yeah and uh here's here's an interesting one and we know this race has not gone well for dominique given how well he uh qualified here the 144 car 
Uh, appeared as though it had been on the pit lane, came out, and then almost immediately uh, we show that it had crashed. And uh, and we'll see if we can pull it up. But Dominique Ford now back on the pit lane getting repairs. Yeah, and that seems like a long time ago, but he was our pole sitter. Here's this replay as he's heading down the inside, passing Lucas Dragota as he now heads down into a gate that's turn 10. 10. And he just... A little bit deep, a little bit of four tracking, checking out the Florida Bermuda grasses. And then. Yeah, maybe he just caught it at night. <laughs> I, yeah, I'm wondering if, yeah, the car maybe has just been fighting him for a while since that initial contact and realizing maybe it just wasn't worth it. Chances of good points just aren't yeah. good. But uh, that's unfortunate because he had some great speed tonight, dominating. Amazing speed. All right, well, you mentioned, though, is 963 and Tanner Dibble is going to have to serve a penalty or has served his penalty and now has a 10-second deficit to Ben Rhodes, his teammates. Can he catch him? He's got the pace. Remember, Rose spun lap one, turn one. Yes. So how crazy is this that you have the lead battle between a guy that spun in turn one, lap one, and a guy that served two drive through penalties? <laughs> that right now is the battle for the lead. <laughs> reminds, me, reminds me of my first ever race, Larry, at uh, what was then known as Beaver Run, which is now the uh, uh, pit that race. Pit? Yeah. And uh, I, I, won't, I won't give his name. <laughs> <laughs> to protect the, actually, he's probably the innocent one. Uh, raced against a gentleman in a Honda CRX who put his car off six times, and he still passed me on the final lap of the race. And, yeah. I have a few guesses of who that could be, um, but I'll, I'll wait. He's till actually, day. he's actually from your, I think, from your neck I, of the I, woods. That'd, that'd be one of the names I was going to guess, but we'll take that up at a different time. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Some guys are fast no matter how many times they find the grass. Yes, exactly. <laughs> All right, so quick some recap guys are here. slow when they don't. Yeah, All quick right. recap as we just passed the 60-minute mark of the race. 30 minutes to go. It is Ben Rose from DNA leading his teammate, Tanner Dibble. And those two have a pit stop to make. And Tanner Dibble, after serving the two penalties, is now down just under 10 seconds. Jordan Butler currently in third. As we flash to GT3 Pro, it's Michael Brooks still with that two-plus second lead over Schwenke and Dragota, but it's shrinking. It was three seconds. We'll keep our eye on that uh, that pink sort of uh, whatever that is, like a carbon fiber pink Lamborghini to see if he's able to hold off the uh, the two behind him in those, uh, those Audis. And then a GT3 Am, it's the other Brooks, Jeff Brooks. Jeff Brooks. Leading in GT3 Am, having a good night tonight. He's up on uh, Kurt Roberts and uh, David Steiner. But the other one to throw in the mix to keep an eye on is Ken Copeland, 13 seconds back from the GT3 Pro lead. Suspicions of maybe one-stopping this thing, which would bring him right back in this. So let's not count him out. He's currently in fifth, uh, uh, 10 seconds behind Thorman or so. And uh, 13, I guess that's 13 seconds behind Thorman and then like another six seconds back from the lead. So he's about 20 seconds total back from the lead is Ken Copeland. Big field tonight though, 36 drivers did actually take practice in qualifying. Some of them of course are no longer out there like uh, Bobby Charles, Marlon Bobby Jones, Marlon Dominic Jones. Ford, now have all dropped out of this thing. David Payton. Ivaki Stein. Yeah. Quite a few of them have decided to pack it in, but still got uh, you know 25 plus cars circling around Sebring International. There's Copeland just kind of moseying along, and his last lap was a 2027, as fast as a 2019, so he's eight tenths off of his overall fastest he's done tonight, which tells me he's he's shooting for a target lap time. Yeah, and, and, yeah. and the, the drivers ahead of them, they are currently lapping a little bit faster. But again, if they have to come in for that final yeah. stop and he doesn't. Well, well, we should check in with his lead GT3 Pro because it is shrinking. Yes. Travis Schwenke's, you can see now, just a couple car lengths back from Michael Brooks. Yeah, and, and Larry, just yeah. in the last lap, 
as Schwenke has knocked almost a full second off of yep. Brooks's lead. The, the, the last three laps, uh, Schwenke had been knocking off, there you go, about two tenths of a second, but something happened. Yep. Nine tenths just on the last lap. Yeah, and we are within that window of second pit stops here. So I'll be curious to see how this is going to go as Schwenke's working his tail to try and get into the draft of Michael Brooks. That'll help him both on fuel, but help him in track position. Schwenke can actually pulled away from Leo Dragoda. So this isn't like a, a two man working together to catch the, the wrong stuff, Michael Brooks. This is just Schwenke turning it on at this stage of the race. Maybe his tires are in better shape than Brooks or Dragoda. That's helping. Not really sure, but whatever it is, it's working for Travis Schwenke. Yeah, well, you know, and I thought, well, you know, nine tenths, that's a lot, to, a lot to make up in one lap. But if we went and looked at that that uh, lap chart that John had up a few moments ago, two laps prior to that, he took out a six tenth chunk. Yeah, well, I mean, you go from nearly three seconds back to 1.2, and it's it's going to happen over a couple yeah. of laps. And in those chunks, exactly what he's doing, he's being precise. Uh, maybe he used a little bit of traffic to his advantage. Whatever it is. He's awfully close to be able to sniff the back of the draft there off the back of Michael Brooks and watch this lap differential come down. See that 1.27, 1.26, 1.25. Yeah, it's creeping down. And this Audi and this Lamborghini in real world are nearly sister cars. Uh, so yeah, basically identical cars. Yeah, yeah so they, they are going to wear tires similarly depending on the setup that they're each running. Uh, but uh, certainly at this stage of the race, they could be pretty equal. under to 1.25 and we're starting to see some of our gtp racers take their second and final pit stop uh peter porzacek in the pit lane right now we just had uh believe both uh, ryan reisman and baron glover take their second pit stops as well well this is just getting interesting as all these pit stops we expect everyone's going to make two stops. The only exception seems to be that uh, Ken Copeland may be trying to stretch this into a one-stopper, but let's kind of wait and see how that plays out here as we have 25 minutes left in this race. Yeah. Uh, in GT3 AM, both Aaron Beaver and Ilya Spiker come down the pit lane. And Ben Rose now pitting in from the lead in GTP. And his teammate coming in behind him. Yeah, so Dibble in as well. Uh, that should put Jordan Butler, for the time being, back up into the lead. Uh, he was about 12 seconds behind, and there he yep. is coming out of Sunset Corner. So how, the question will be is, how good are their calculations? Because you, you don't need to necessarily fill this thing to the top. You can save some pit stop time by having a correct amount of fuel go in the car. Let's see between Butler and Dibble, who's got that math correct, as they are both filling right now. And and Rose He's on the move comes quite out a bit and Dibble. Dibble. Yeah. Yeah, Dibble hasn't moved yet. Now he is. Yeah, Dibble's on his way out now. They were about seven and a half seconds before the stop. It looks like it's gonna be eight or so now. So advantage to Rose between them. Dibble had taken out about two or three seconds over the previous number of laps. So with 25 minutes to go, Dibble could still have the pace to catch Rose. Dibble's been really fast tonight, but uh, let's keep our eye on that gap. But it is their teammate, or it is Tanner. Yeah, it's their teammate, Jordan Butler, now leading this race. I think it's a DNA 1-2-3 right now in GTP. Not on the list there because he's a little bit further down, but Padukui Grant from D2D comes in for his second pit stop now. His first stop was quite a bit longer after having the repairs after the uh, the contact that early contact, on. Yeah. Let's see if he's able to pick up a spot or two before this thing is done. suspect in the next five minutes we're going to see a lot of this a lot of these uh, pit stops that whole gt3 field they could come in now but if they wait until they're absolutely dry most of them should be coming in about the hour and 15 minute mark so in the next right. less than 10. well would it i mean would it make more sense larry just simply because if they if they pit in early 
and load up on fuel. They're probably, you know, you know I guess still at the it's, end of the race. They're going to be you're lighter. Technically, you are carrying a little bit of extra fuel right. uh, just because you got that overlap between laps. And you take a little on now to finish the race, but it's an instant even amount. I would say the benefit is find the option for clean track. You know, right. if you're coming up on traffic, if you're a GTP car, if you're coming up on traffic of a bunch of GT3s, go ahead and pull in. If you're a GT3 working through some traffic or you know this next lap isn't going to be clean air, maybe you dive in, take your fuel load now. Or if you got that clean air, just use it for all you can. All right, and Jeff Jacobs, who has already taken his second pit stop, currently sitting sixth in pro, uh, he's got five AM drivers uh, to get up to Ken Copeland, who is uh, currently sitting fifth in pro. And again, we think Ken Copeland going to try to make this on just the single stop. We'll see how, see whether yeah. or not he can make that work. He is still, uh, he's got the two AM drivers of uh, Brooks and Roberts directly ahead of him uh, yeah. with, uh, what, about, I think about four seconds up to the next car. Well, to give you an idea, I think what we said earlier, what we, as we watched, thanks to two different opportunities, Tanner Dibble served his drive through penalties. It ended up being about a 20 second or so delta to do a straight pass through the pits. Right. Now, if you stop for a, a fuel stop, and let's say you put in eight seconds of fuel, that's a 28 second delta. And I'm looking at Michael Brooks leading GT3 Pro and Ken Copeland, the, sus the suspect for this one stop strategy. They're 22 seconds apart now. If Brooks comes in, 20 seconds down the lane plus eight seconds of fuel 28 seconds that puts copeland six seconds up but copeland still has to make 20 more minutes on the fuel that he's got right. this is going to be super close if this works out i i think strategies are playing out maybe at both ends to find out it didn't matter and in the end these two guys are going to be side by side but michael brooks has done everything he can to run away from a couple of uh, orion's all race and now he's got to figure out is his own teammate going to end up being the one that spoils this And Anna's in the chat, just rooting for the team. That's right. <laughs> Brooks Brothers for life. And right now it is is Brooks leading in pro. It's Brooks leading in AM with Michael and uh, and Jeff leading their respective classes. Well, you know, if it comes down to it, Larry, we'll just bring them both into the uh, bring them both into the commentary booth at the end of the broadcast and let them fight it out for airtime. I could just bring in Anna. She can tell us what went on. I'm yeah, sure actually, knows. that might be that might be better. It's better yeah. than bringing in Bobby. Uh, so. <laughs> 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 all right so there's jeff brooks he's got a good uh, nine second lead over kurt roberts in a mercedes jeff brooks of course in that uh, beautiful i love the livery there on that Audi. i like chrome as an accent it's one of my favorites and he's having a solid night he's winning the end category right now uh by nine seconds and he's only Fifth overall in the GT3 ranks. I mean, he's, he's ahead of some pretty big names. We're talking about Ken Copeland. Uh, he's ahead of Jeff Jacobs. He's ahead of some pretty solid drivers here running in those GT3 pros. So, Larry, uh, I think probably around 10 minutes ago or so, we were talking about uh, Travis Schwenke's tires. He might have felt them coming on. And you can see now, yeah. as he has pulled within about three car lengths, I've been watching for the past number of laps and Michael Brooks's rear tires on that Lamborghini, I think, have been starting to give up the ghost uh, here early on. He's yeah. getting, uh, he's definitely having some trouble get getting the power down out of turn three, for example, coming through the hairpin as well. We'll see here. I think he's been trying to open up this section as much as possible. Let's see what the rear does coming out of the tower. Uh, it looked okay there. But, it might be uh, those slower corners where the car is, doesn't have any aero help in you and you're trying right. to put the power down. Maybe the faster stuff when the car is loaded a little bit more, it's helping, right. helping him out. But Schwenke just looks quick. Schwenke's last lap, a 2017, just a couple of hundredths off of his fastest lap of the yeah. race. Uh, Brooks, I mean, still 2020, there you can see the lap time. Yeah. Brooks, he's still putting down some really good laps, but Schwenke is just right there with him. Yeah, I mean, not you can see there uh, knocked off uh, about a quarter of a second that last time, only a couple hundredths the yeah. previous two laps. But uh, I mean, he's definitely coming as far as oh. Dragota goes. Dragota not stops? keeping up the pace. Well, let's take we a are. look, and there we go. Michael Brooks, Schwenke going to come in Schwenke's right with him. Follow him, and here comes Leo Dragota as well. What about Jeff Brooks? Is he going to follow in? Nope, Brooks. Jeff no. Brooks is going to continue. And so this is going to move Chris Thorman up to the lead in pro, at least for the time being. 
He'll get that uh, bonus point for leading the lap. Yep. And Jeff Brooks right there with him, about two seconds back. So let, yeah, look at this grouping in the pits right now between Michael Brooks and then the two Orion drivers and Schwenke. And look at Michael Brooks gets out quite a bit earlier than Schwenke or Jagoda. That, that's a lot. Yeah, I, and looking at looking at the times here, Larry. Yeah, what, about four about seconds difference. Four seconds, yeah. That's huge at this stage of the race. Remember, they were nose to tail coming in. So perhaps Michael did a better job of uh, saving some fuel or he's taking some risk on his fuel calculations. We'll have to see. Yeah, but meanwhile, he, he was able now just, just in that pit cycle to claw back what about, well, uh, about three and a half of the four seconds uh, <laughs> because of what uh, Schwenke had made up uh, previously. So uh, let's see here. Again, current leader in pro has not come in for a second stop yet is Chris Thorman. And he's dealing with some GTP battles going on around him. Is that was that Reisman? I couldn't tell Reisman, which of the DNAs. And uh, Polly Queen Grant, I think the DNA that just went or the uh, D two D that just went by. Got more DNA coming up behind him. That might be Jordan Butler, actually. That might be a race leader that just went by him. It is. Yeah, that is the, the Acura nose. That would be Jordan Butler. So Butler has not taken his second stop yet. And he currently ben has Rose about 23 has. seconds. Yeah, I think Ben Rose has already stopped. Taylor has. Dibble has already stopped. And Dibble just reset fast to lap. Uh, yeah. Dibble right now lapping three seconds faster than Jordan Butler. Yeah. And so Butler's only got 28 seconds on him. And his stop should be pretty quick when he chooses to do it. It may be happening soon. Let's see if he, as we got him right now through sunset, does he stay to the inside and go no. in? No. He's oh. going to take at least one more. Okay. All right, yeah. Chris. Uh, Kurt Roberts now pitting in. He pits in uh, from second in GT3 AM. Uh, that That's is going to now move David Steiner in his BMW up in the second in AM third overall it third puts, in gt3 it for the moment puts jeff brooks the am leader in the lead of all the gt3s in this race so he may end up getting that bonus point as well for leading a lap as the am leader leading even all the pros here as we've got the uh, intervals between the pit stops there he is it's uh, quite a bit up on his rivals right now but again he does have to make his second stop we believe and of course, Ken Copeland now back to the lead in pro, uh, currently running second in the GT3s behind Jeff Brooks, about 12 seconds in arrears. Ken Copeland make it to the end. As if he can. And so he's Copeland got a 10 second cushion. Yeah, and Copeland's lapping right now at about the same pace as Jeff Brooks uh, at yeah. a two around a two o two three. Copeland doesn't have, I don't believe, has any GT three traffic in front of him. In fact, there he is coming out of the old uh, coming out of turn sixteen right now. Yeah, and he's got Steiner back there behind him. Steiner, and Steiner right now stop. is uh, on the last lap, lapped around two tenths off of Copeland's times. Yeah. Because again, we've got uh, what about just a little bit less than 15 minutes remaining uh, yeah. here. About th actually about 13 minutes remaining on the clock here from Sebring. So Brooks, Copeland, and Steiner continue without a second pit stop yet. So that's your M12, and in between them, your pro leader. There's Jeff Brooks leading all the GT3s right now. And there's Michael Brooks, currently second, the GT3 Pro, fourth in the running order of all the GT3s. Fastest so far, first of all, the ones that have taken two stops. I think that's critical because should Jeff Brooks and David Steiner come in, and I suspect they will, they should drop in behind Michael Brooks, which then puts Michael Brooks 
9.8 seconds down from down. his teammate and rival, Ken Copeland. Uh, GP the 13 of Baron Glover goes down the inside of into seven in that GTP car. Yeah, and Larry, you know, if and if there's a, a nine point second gap there, that's that that's a lot of time for Ken Copeland. You know, nice buffer for him to continue to fuel save to yeah. make to make it to the end. Yeah, as I mean, as he's been, he's just every lap is a load. It's a low 202 yeah. every time I look up for Ken Copeland. Every yeah. single time. It's somewhere between a 2021 and a 2023, which is super consistent. Uh, it, if he's targeting a lap time to make it on fuel, he's doing it the right way and just not tr pushing too hard. Right. It, it'll help it's, him if if also we don't run much past the full 90 minutes. Right. I mean, it's just it's hard. It's so hard to tell because there are so many racers around him that are running mm -hmm. almost the exact same lap times. But you get the feeling that they are pushing the cars very hard to turn those yeah. lap times. All right. Coming on to the pit lane now, Jeff Brooks pits in from the lead in GT3 AM. And that should move Copeland now up into the lead for GT3. So he should get that bonus. Well, I think he had already gotten it early on. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, but uh, there's Copeland now. Oh, is Copeland's going to get run to the inside by Greg Brockway in the number 62 yeah. Ferrari. Copeland Brockway was, lets him through. He was careful about going to the inside. Not yeah. until he saw Brockway's going to stay out there. Did he actually commit to that move? Smart, smart move by both drivers. Reading the chat now that Anna is saying if a Brooks wins in pro and a Brooks wins in AM, we call that a double Brooks lockout, but we're still waiting another 10 minutes or 12 minutes to figure out if that's true. And then she says, I'll do it. I assume that that's a response to us saying, maybe we should interview her instead of <laughs> yes, either Michael or so. Jeff. So we might need to get Anna into the, uh, into the green room here shortly. We'll have to wait and see how this finishes up. But all right, so that's David Steiner coming out of the pits. He is in third in the AM class. As Alex Brown has made his way in for his last pit stop, Steiner about four seconds back from Kurt Roberts and another 12 or so from Jeff Brooks. All right, Larry, and we uh, just had a note uh, flash up on the screen here. Uh, an incident between Andre Wetterburn in the 151 Porsche, Mark Schindel in the 418 Porsche. Uh, they are currently running seventh and eighth in AM. That's under investigation currently. Let's take a look. We'll see what happened. Yeah, keep an eye on these two. They're together. And that is a contact between the Sherbert colored and, cars. Yes. And I <laughs> was going to say, good. Larry, and, and I want to thank uh, Director John because I was thinking that it was it looked just like synchronized swimming. as uh, <laughs> You know, but, be between Bobby's Rocky Road and Stubby's Cheesecake, and now I got these two spinning like two scoops of Sherbert. I am really hungry right now. <laughs> Gosh. <laughs> <laughs> Gosh. All right, so we, we've got now a little bit under 10 minutes remaining here at Sebring. We're watching Ben Rose right now, who's running second in GTP, second overall. He has already taken a second pit stop. Jordan Butler, who is about 20 seconds up the road, we suspect he is going to need to drop into the pits for yeah. one last splash of gas. Well, this is going to be interesting, though, because Dibbles, yeah. as you can see on that graphic, he's catching teammate Ben Rose. The question will be, is 20 seconds buffer to Jordan Butler going to be enough to get in for a splash and go? Right. He's going to need just a couple seconds. He's going to need, like, I don't know, maybe three gallons of fuel or something quick into that car to be able to make it to the end. It's going to be very, very close. Yeah, and on that last lap, Tanner Dibble took about eight-tenths out of Ben Rose's uh, mm -hmm. advantage there. Rowe is trying to use the traffic at the right spots to get on by, not get held up in the corners, because those GTPs are so much faster through the corners with the downforce than the GT3 is really a big difference there. And there's that graphic Dibble continuing to take chunks out of Rose's second to third place margin. Yeah. Yeah, that time another six tenths. Yeah. And while Butler continues to take another lap, he's 20 seconds up the road from these guys. There yeah, he is, dealing with his own traffic. traffic. <laughs> yeah. So he got around, I don't know if that was... Uh, I think it was David Robert Steiner. Brist? Maybe or, Brist. Oh, maybe, it was one yeah, of our BMWs. Okay. 
we haven't seen much of uh, Robert Perez tonight. I think that might have been a little different uh, colors around the kidneys mm. in the front. But, oh, look at this. This is not what Jordan Butler wants to see, which is just a mess of different things going on. One of those looks like is the I the 195. The... That's Kurt Roberts. Roberts. And then up in front of him, it's going to be Polly Kui Grant. I think Ryan Reisman. Is that that is? I was just going to say, I think the, I think the, is that the Cadillac of Reisman or was that the, I thought maybe it was the Acura, the 13th of Glover, but. Uh... Uh, it, it looks like a DNA car, which yes. might be Reisman. Yeah. It's hard to tell. There's so many of those Gators, like eight of them out here tonight. But uh, I think that that it should be a D2D in Grant. As Butler continues to go around, so we'll be at at least a minute 25, or minute, an hour 25 for Butler before he decides to make the splash, making that last pit stop even shorter. Catching these two. It is going to be really close for Jordan Butler. I don't know if he can make it to the end. We didn't really take note of when he took his first pit stop. Oh, and they're chatting to each other. Cooey Grant says, go left, and he does. So Butler now gets by the D2D driver. But now he's got what looks like uh, Jeff Brooks in front of him, and then one of his teammate, Reisman, I think, out in front of him. Oh, no. Oh, 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 oh that was so close. And Grant well, able to avoid him. And, the, and oh. the Grant avoid the, the tire wall there on exit. It looks like he might have. Yep, and there's a, there's a bit of an apology happening on the chat right now, but now he's going to catch up to this lead pack at GT3s. This is not what Jordan Butler wants, knowing if he's going to make a, a fuel stop. That is the 414 of Reisman now dead in front of him. Maybe do a little bit of a pull on that draft. And behind them, Dibble has gotten to within about two seconds of Rose. Is this the stop? Is this the stop? No, no, no it's no. not. No, 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 no. Well, <laughs> if he's going to stop, it's going to be awfully close to checker. Yeah, I was going to say, Larry, because we've only got about four and a half minutes yeah. remaining. Uh, you know, but what about uh, about three laps? Maybe two laps? Anywhere on those displays to tell us how much fuel he's got left on that wheel? Yeah, that's what I, that's what I was just thinking. <laughs> Can we <on>. read that? <laughs> They don't give us live telemetry to that level, but it takes his E. <laughs> <laughs> are there any flashing lights, Larry? Because Homer Simpson has told me that flashing lights are never a good thing. I, I know when you drive the Miata, it flashes the light at you and it runs out of fuel, but I don't yes. see it here on the steering wheel with the Acura. He is definitely getting a tow, though, from his teammate as they come up here to turn 10. That's a good job for a teammate helping teammate here. Try and get to the end. Of course, it's a teammate helping a teammate who's trying to fend off two more teammates. Two more teammates. <laughs> As Rose continues to be two seconds ahead of Dibble, but 15 seconds behind the driver we're on board with, Jordan Butler, continues to lead this race. And if we quickly check our standings of GTP points before this night started, Leading the yeah. way was Milan Harris, and then Petrowski was not here. Jordan Butler came into tonight third. Tanner Dibble came into tonight fourth. fourth. Ben Rose came in in sixth. And again, all of them separated, I think, by four points. Yeah, um, yeah. Ten, I, I, I was going to say it is, it, it is. It is. Yeah, the the top the top five are separated by four points. Uh, Harris eight. and Petrowski were tied. Obviously, and then it's eight more points here. behind yeah. them to, to Rose. So really, Rose. it's just those 12 points separating first to last. Oh and Harris is not going to get great points tonight. Petrowski's not getting any points tonight. So this is a tough, tough points night here at GTP. This should be interesting as Copeland now still leading GT3 Pro by nine seconds, but it's come down. It was about 11 seconds a few laps ago. 
Oh, he's, and he's still running in the two, he's running the, the high 202s now, yeah. Larry, where Travis Schwenke is currently in the two, mid 201s. Michael Brooks running the same pace as Ken Copeland right now, right yeah. at about a 202.9, not making up any ground. Yeah, but Copeland's got to make it two minutes plus whatever the last leader's last lap will be. Yeah. We are now at an hour and 28 minutes. And again, Reisman continuing to tow. Oh, this is not Reisman towing. This is Ben Rose. And I think that's Tanner Dibble. Tanner half Dibble a second behind. behind him. I got confused and, with the two Gator paints. Yeah, and well, and also in that sequence, Larry, that was uh, Michael Brooks in yeah. the number 83 machine. And uh, again, we talked about the rear tires going away on Michael Brooks' machine. I think that's probably one of the reasons why he's, he's running the same pace right now. Is Copeland, who we think is trying to save fuel, is yeah. just Brooks doesn't have any rear tires left on that Lamborghini. I, you may be right there, but in this battle, Ben Rose needs these points. He needs to stay ahead of his teammate Tanner Dibble because Dibble, again, has got him by about eight points coming into tonight. Rose would love to get a few more than his rival. This is Jordan Butler, we think, is going to get the white flag this time by, and he's going to do this on a one yes. stopper because he ain't stopping now. He's either no. it's either fumes. <laughs> Or he's gonna, or he's gonna make it. We'll see. It's checker or wreck or wrecker, and that wrecker is gonna be what's towing him <laughs> back to the pits. Uh, so here we go, last lap. Uh, Jordan Butler, Tanner Dibble separated now by um, well, practically nothing. Well, it's Dibble now ahead of Rose. He got around him. Oh wow! Yes. So it must have happened there on the back straight, but they got traffic in front of them. Can Rose counter move? That's the 151 right in front of him. And that's Andrew Wedderburn. He's going to stay right, let these guys play through. There's another one coming up, I think, up around turn seven. There's Ken Copeland, your leader of GT3 Pro, trying to also one-stop this thing. So your leader of GT3 Pro and your leader of the race in GTP are each trying to one-stop this thing. And Ken Copeland, Larry, just had, uh, coming out of turn three, had a little issue, put the car off the gap now to Michael Brooks. Uh, yeah. about a, Brooks has been able to take a full second out of Copeland. I think Copeland is, is just trying to hang on here for dear you know, life. But given it where the, the flag came out, I believe these guys have all seen the white flag. Yeah, I got agreed. that right. Yeah, because. Yes. Yeah, they're this behind this Butler. path right now. So uh, Copeland's yep. going to be on the last lap. That and, worked uh, out very well for both Copeland yes. and for Butler in terms of timing against the clock. Indeed. All right. So here we go. Butler with almost 12 seconds on Tanner Dibble and Ben Rose comes through the final corner. The 172 DNA Motorsports Acura going to take the win here at Sebring International Raceway. Uh, Ryan Reisman comes across the line just behind. He's going to finish sixth. Paolo Cui Grant will finish two laps down in eighth. So let's jump to this. Uh, let's take a look here. Ken Copeland, who is the second car in line. He yep. is coming into the final corner right now. And Larry, you called it and you called it early as Ken Copeland makes, does the best fuel saving that we've seen here yeah. tonight. And Ken Copeland from the wrong stuff takes the win in GT3 Pro. Michael Brooks, he's going to finish second. Travis Schwenke will finish third in pro. And now Jeff Brooks, he crosses the line. He takes the oh. win in AM. Solid race for Jeff. Yeah, very good race. Almost 13, almost 14 seconds up on Kurt Roberts, who should be coming into the final corner now. And uh, Roberts comes across the line. The 195 Mercedes finishes in second, finishing third. In GT3 AM, David Steiner. Yeah, great ride for our winners. I can't wait to talk to some of them. This is going to be uh, this will be some really good interviews. Different strategies playing out to tonight to leading to different victories. This is going to be a lot of fun to talk to these guys. All right, so let's do this, Larry. Why don't we take a quick break? We'll see. We'll see if if Butler and maybe Ken Copeland can actually get their cars back as, without as running a out of fuel first. Parade happening. Yes. Yeah, so. <laughs> 
Well, there are four of the six of them. All right, let's uh, let's take a quick little break. Uh, well, thanks to our partners and sponsors. And when we come back, we'll talk to some of our podium finishers here tonight from Sebring, where you have just seen round number six of the Extreme Motorsports Rick Motek World Challenge presented by Performa Elite, by Butt Kicker, and the SCCA Foundation. We'll be right back. The SCCA Foundation is a 501c3 organization serving as the charitable arm of the Sports Car Club of America. One of the programs partially funded by the foundation is the SCCA Academy, an online learning management system used to keep real-life racing track officials up to date on the highest standards of race safety and officiating. Through this program, the SCCA Foundation is supporting the future of the best trained corner workers and event officials in motorsport. You can support these efforts at www.sccafoundation.org. Rick Motek, high performance sim racing equipment. Whether you're just looking to have fun, train for race day, or become a serious esports competitor, Rick Motek has you covered. Hundreds of name brand parts. Support from experts that love sim racing. Trusted by the pros. There's only one place to go rickmotek.com. search is over. The most comprehensive league scoring solution is here with the ability for multi-level championships, custom incident tracking, post-race time penalties, support for heats, drop weeks display, multi-car team scoring, advanced web widgets, rookie championships, a custom paint system, and load those results in seconds. Visit extremescoring.info today. Rick Motek, high performance sim racing equipment. Hundreds of name brand parts. Expert support. Rick Motek has you covered. There's only one place to go rickmotek.com. Welcome back, everybody, to Sebring International Raceway, where we've just finished up. 90 minutes of amazing road racing here for round number six of the Extreme Motorsports Rick Matek World Challenge presented by Butt Kicker and the SCCA Foundation on Apex Racing TV. I'm Greg Ginsburg, along with Larry Lefty McLeod and let's take a look at that finishing order once again. We'll start off with GTP where Jordan Butler led six other DNA Motorsports drivers across the line. Butler takes the win. Oh, by 10, uh, about 12 seconds over his teammate Tanner Dibble, Ben Rose finishing in third. And we'll look at that just off the podium. Peter Portsacek from DNA finishing in fourth. So lots, lots of alligators coming across the line. In GT3 Am, Jeff Brooks from The Wrong Stuff takes the win over Dead Bulls' Kurt Roberts with Dominate Racing's David Steiner finishing in third. And in GT3 Pro, Wow, and and now we know it can be done, Larry. Mm -hmm. Ken Copeland, on a few on a fuel saving mission here tonight, takes the win for the wrong stuff. His teammate Michael Brooks will finish in second. Travis Schwenke from Orion finishes third in GT3 Pro. All right, so one, let's do this. We have got sitting in the uh, the green room here. Uh, GT3 drivers. That, yeah, yeah we've got a couple GT3 drivers. Let's bring in, we have uh, Jeff Brooks, who was our GT3 AM winner for the Wrong Stuff Racing. Let's talk to him. All right, Jeff Brooks, one of them Brooks brothers, the Wrong Stuff Racing entry. What a race for you. Just uh, kind of checked out for the rest of the GT3 AM field. Just kind of mixed it up all night long in the GT3 Pro side of things. Awesome race for you. How are you feeling about tonight? Thanks. Yeah, it was a it was a good race. I had fun at the start, um, battling with a with a few of the other drivers, trying to stay out of incidents. But um, you know, it was a uh, it was a little sketchy at the start, but made it through. And then was hoping for some good battles to 
the middle and then the end of the race, I saw Orion did a, a decent fuel strat there, gained a little bit in the middle of the middle of the race, and then ended up uh, coming out like about two, two and a half seconds behind Leo there after the second pit stop, but then just didn't have the pace to, to catch up Reelman and have a battle with him up there, but got close, it was fun. Yeah, and honestly, for your, your AM class points, you're going to do very well as you manage to stay ahead of your rivals, Aaron Beaver, Alex Brown. So this is going to be a strong, strong points result for you. Is this? I, I assume a lot of folks had tried the 12-hour uh, Sebring this past weekend, so you get a lot of practice time. Were you a part of that, or you just happen to like Sebring and like this car? <laughs> no, I, I think I kind of lucked out. I finished tweaking my setup in the, uh, in the pre-race practice here, and then, yeah, I ran qualifying, ended up getting... Uh, throwing a little bit of a loop there in qualifying. I had a really good time in practice, but then qualifying got held up a little bit, um, but ended up doing pretty well. So I'm, I'm happy with my with my pace. A um, little bit of, little bit more practice would have helped me quite a bit. I, I didn't do the the 12 hour race uh, in official or anything like that, um, but uh, uh, yeah, that, that probably would have helped my pace a little bit. But I, I don't know. I'm I'm happy with it. Yeah, you, and absolutely you should be. It's a great race for you tonight. But you got to know, if you go back and watch the race, you're going to hear us say that we almost decided to invite Anna in here to do the interviews, especially if it had been a, a full Brooks sweep. But, uh, you know, you end up being the only Brooks to win the class tonight. A great effort to get himself on the podium for Michael. But uh, for you, the win means everything, I'm sure. And uh, Anna, maybe we'll catch her next time. But uh, for you, yeah. Yeah, anybody else you want to give a shout out to or a thanks to for helping to get the win tonight? Oh, yeah, for sure. I mean, I, I practice a lot with Mike and Ken and, and Dre at, with the wrong stuff racing. Um, Ken did a pretty insane fuel save there and uh, came yeah. out with a win. That was crazy. He was like 10 seconds behind me and then, you know, saved a pit stop. So yeah. kudos to him uh, tonight. Uh, and then, of course, this this race win dedicated to my girlfriend, Ingrid, love you, and my parents watching, uh, Anna, um, the whole family uh, gets behind us and supports Mike and I, so that's always fun. Um, and, and, and she just put in the chat, she said, you did great, baby, and then all of a sudden she deleted it, so. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you, baby. You can keep that in there. That's right. <laughs> love it. Uh, Awesome, awesome job tonight, Jeff. Getting the win for the Wrong Stuff Racing, Jeff Brooks. Congrats. All right. Thanks, everybody. All right. There you go, Jeff Brooks, everybody. All right. Let's now move over to Larry GTP, and uh, we'll bring in one of the, the 500 or so racers, <laughs> one, of the, one of the Gators tonight from uh, DNA. Uh, we are going to talk to Jordan Butler, who took our overall win, took the win in GTP. All right, Jordan Butler is the answer to the trivia question we had about an hour ago was, does anybody really want to win GTP? And I say that because you had, we had accidents, we had penalties assigned, but you managed to kind of step ahead of all of that fray and do it on what we believe is a one-stop race. Is that true? That is correct. I did do a one-stop. And yeah, uh, yeah and, and you talk about the incidents ahead, that definitely helped because then I didn't really have to worry about where they were going to be at the end of the race. <laughs> but I was watching the lap times and I was watching like, all right, what's their pace? I knew that I had to be within like seven tenths of a second per lap. As long as I was like within that, then like they can run away and do whatever they want. And I'll, uh, I'll get them at the end. Oh, a beautiful execution on that strategy. And it was so much fun to watch because we, with you, we didn't quite pick it up that you had timed your first stop to maybe run this thing to the end. And so we were expecting that you're gonna have to make the splash and go, you're up about 20 seconds to, to Ben and to Tanner. We're like, okay, he's gonna have to come in. And every lap you just kept going. We're like, well, maybe he's maybe he's not going to. And it really built a lot of suspension for us. And it was a beautiful thing to watch as you executed that. And at the end, it looked like maybe getting a little bit crazy as you caught a bunch of traffic on those last couple laps. and. And then did, did Ryan help pull you along for a couple laps and give you a last bit of uh, drafting for you? Um, I did catch up to Ryan, um, and then he asked if I needed any draft. And then he's in the our comms together. He's like my mm -hmm. teammate. And uh, no, I said, nope, I I saved a lot. Um, so I actually had plenty to the end, wow. which, was, which was surprising. So um, we were just hanging out for a little while. Um, <laughs> and then, uh, and, and yeah, so... And my teammates were the ones in, in second and third here, so I knew that you know if something did happen, you know it wouldn't be too much pressure on me if uh, if they did catch up. So yeah, it, it made I, them, yeah, yeah. It was it was really a lot of fun to watch, and 
I gotta ask because there's like eight of you out here tonight. The Gator livery. We were warned ahead of time that this was coming. This is a beautiful thing. Whose idea was this to have all of you guys with this awesome, you know, Florida Everglades <laughs> sort of style livery on the whole yeah. DNA team? Yeah, it's 100 percent Ryan Reisman. Uh, it was his idea. Uh, I think he's got. He's a really big fan. I think it's a. It's an old Audi R8 livery from like 2002 mm -hmm. or something. And uh, he just, uh, you know, loved it. And we just put on all the cars for Sebring. And, uh, you know, the Gators are going to get you. So you got to watch out. <laughs> he said as a spotter's guy, told us which trim on the uh, the main longitudinal wing was going to be which driver. We said, we can't even see these cars are so fast. No way we can see that. But tonight we needed to know because they're, all of you ended up taking like, you know, the top three or four spots and something that seemed to be to be a gator running around it every time we turn the camera on a car mm -hmm. uh, but for you you managed to be the fastest of the gators tonight swimming faster than the rest and uh taking home that awesome win here and i tell you in one of the tightest points battle we've ever had a world challenge in our top prototype class you are killing it with getting this win here uh it's going to be tight tight points right up to the end but i gotta ask now you've uh, you've got the win here but i'm sure you got some folks you want to thank for helping you get the win yeah, uh, first of all, uh, DNA Motorsports, you know, that's our team. Uh, we've been pushing each other. We're helping each other out with uh, the 12 hour that's the past weekend. Um, they're doing great. And then uh, my girlfriend for let me get on late at night and, uh, you know, taking time away from her. So she's awesome. And then uh, also my friend John, who, uh, you know, I said I mentioned this last time I got the win, but like he's been dealing with some uh, medical stuff and he'd love to be on the rig right now, but he, uh, so. He's watching us, so uh, rooting for him to get better and, and hopefully get back on the rig one day. Yeah, absolutely. Can't wait to see him get back in here, too. So, But uh, for you tonight, awesome victory. Great victory for the whole DNA team. Getting the win tonight, Jordan Butler. Congrats. Yeah, and Thank Larry, before we, yeah. before we send Jordan out, thanks, Jordan. Sorry about stepping on you there. Uh, just had the points updated. Jordan Butler now your leader in GTP going into the final, final round with a six-point advantage. Uh, over his teammate Tanner Dibble. All right, and uh, GT3 Am because we didn't uh, didn't have the points at that point. Let's uh, let's move Jordan out here in GT3 Am. Currently, Aaron Beaver with a five point advantage over Jeff Brooks. And now let's bring in our GT3 Pro winner tonight. Also, with just a single pit stop to his name, Ken Copeland from the Wrong Stuff. All right, Ken Copeland, you have been fast all season long, but tonight it seemed your speed was well calculated for that single pit stop strategy. When did you make this plan to do this on a one stopper? Um, so as soon as Jeff Jacobs posted in the Discord and was like, mandatory two stopper, I like kind of went and looked at the fuel percentages and I was like, hmm, I think I can make that, but I don't know if I'll be fast enough doing it. Um, and with the 12 last weekend, I just didn't have a ton of practice time in the Merc. We were in the, the Lambo in the actual 12. So I wasn't sure if it was going to work out, but I also knew I didn't have a ton of practice time. So we just kind of went with the meme, considering I had two drop weeks to you know burn, essentially. Yeah. Unbelievable. Because we, we were watching. In fact, you go back and you watch the race replay. About a third of the race in, I'm kind of questioning, saying, where's Ken's pace? Where is this? Why is he hanging out behind a couple of cars in the GT3 amps who were quick tonight? But you know, typically you're the other side of them. And then about the time when everyone else pit and you hadn't yet, we started figuring out that something was up and it was really a lot of fun to watch your pace. From what I noted was the consistency. I don't know if you were targeting a 202, but you seem to be right on that every lap. Yeah, I was basically expecting people that were quick to be averaging around the two flat mark. So my goal was to stay under a 2.5. Um, I do have to throw a huge shout out to Robert Schwenkler, who helped me out a ton. He was sitting in comms, basically reading off burn rates lap after lap, going, OK, here's the target. Here's the target. So I could just kind of keep my pace where it needed to be. But it was a little bit of a shot in the dark. I had no clue where Michael was going to come out after that second pit stop. Yeah, uh, unbelievable to have someone like Swankler there basically as your crew chief kind of walking you through it. That's That's got to be awesome. But part of the, the wrong stuff team there. So very cool to hear he's he's helping you guys out, even if he's not behind the wheel. Uh, but unbelievable. And you, you're thinking coming in, this is maybe a throwaway for you. You end up getting the victory here over a teammate. Michael having to wait till next time to get his, his next win. Uh, but the battle coming down here in the season between you guys is getting a little tight. It's, it's really a lot of fun to watch the wrong stuff. But just uh, just a great effort tonight a great execution to uh, to get this one stop victory for the wrong stuff uh but i'm sure you got some folks you want to give a shout out to 
Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So first off, obviously, you guys, um, Apex Racing does a wonderful job week in and week out. So thank you so much for what you do. Um, I do want to throw it out to our sponsors. So WC91 Liveries, uh, UB Safe, Sim Motion, McConey, Dangerous, Buck Kicker, Abruzzi. Um, they all let us do kind of what we do with our beautiful libraries, if you will, or liverize, as some might say. <laughs> um, I do want to thank my awesome wife, all my friends, all the guys on the team. Uh, they put in so much effort, whether it be supporting me or going out cutting practice laps, and it helps everybody improve. So huge win for everybody. Um, I appreciate all the support. Thanks, guys. Awesome job. Big team there helping you out, getting you victories here for the wrong stuff. Ken Copeland, winner tonight, GT3 Pro. All right, Larry, and we've got an updated uh, updated point standings in GT3 Pro. Ken Copeland came into the evening with a three-point advantage over his teammate Michael Brooks, leaves the evening with a seven-point advantage. And uh, probably the biggest thing here is that Leo Dragota. Uh, who was third coming into the evening. He's still third, um, but uh, he loses uh, three points in the exchange here. Came in, uh, came in, uh, oh, actually, you know what? I take that back. <laughs> he's uh, He came in 18 points out of, the, out of the championship. He's now 11 points out of the championship. So he picked up a few points there, uh, finishing in fourth. All right, so uh, let's wrap things up. Uh, here for the evening. Uh, again, a reminder to everybody that uh, we are not going to be racing next Monday night uh, as uh, we are going to be celebrating either uh, Easter Monday or April Fool's Day if you're Bobby Childs. And uh, so check back with us in two weeks, Monday night, April 8th, 8 p.m. Eastern time. It is going to be round seven of the Rick Tech Touring Car Cup for our MX-5 and GR Cup cars, GR86 Cup cars. We're going to be at my... Uh, favorite racetrack in the whole wide world, Summit Point Raceway for two 30-minute sprint races. And then in two weeks, it's the World Challenge finale. We head to Suzuka for a 75-minute endurance race. And remember, the Rick Matek Sports Car Series returns April 29th for our GT4 and LMP3 racers. Registration opens up this week. Head on over to xmsracing.com to find out more information. All right, so for Jonathan Grabowski back in the booth, I want to thank Jonathan, as always, for putting together a great show. For Larry Lefty McLeod, I'm Greg Ginsberg. We'll see you in two weeks. Have a great week, everybody. Rick Motek, high-performance sim racing equipment. There's only one place to go, rickmotek.com.